you are live. Thank you very much. We are now streaming live. It is 5.06 p.m. Uh, and we're calling the meeting to order. It is a regular meeting of the governing body, December 14, 2022. Um, we'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance led by Councillor Chavez. Salute to the New Mexico flag, Councilwoman Verial, and an invocation and remembrances led by Councillor Michael Garcia. Please rise. As we begin to wrap up our work for the rest of the year, I just want to leave us with some words as we begin to weave what will become the tapestry of 2023. Uh, we've been blessed to accomplish many great things for the city of Santa Fe this year. I want to give thanks to my colleagues on the council, to staff, and to the community for uh, working alongside us as we do our best to improve the lives for all Santa fans and future generations. Uh, as we work towards 2023, uh, please let those blessings continue. Please uh, continue to keep an eye out for each other and please continue to do good. With that, I'll hand it off to you, Mayor, for remembrances. Thank you, Councillor. Are there those who'd like to remember some? Councillor Linda. Thank you, Mayor. I have a couple of remembrances. Um, I want to acknowledge the um, passing of Dan Hamilton, son of Bud and Valerie Hamilton. Um, please hold them close. Shower them with love and kindness. Um, Dan was called to his greater rewards way too soon. 52 years old, and um, his parents, Bud and Valerie, have, I think, touched every life in Santa Fe with all the um, work that they've done with different charities and different boards, and the generosity of spirit that they show in this town is uncommon. Um, so please hold them in your thoughts and your heart and send them healing um, prayers. Secondly, I want to acknowledge today um, is the 10th anniversary of Sandy Hook. And I know for the parents of those 20 little first graders, a 10-year anniversary means very little to them because every day is an anniversary of missing their little child. Um, I hope we can commit ourselves here and all across this country to addressing those types of tragedy. They're unthinkable. They're little first graders. I never see a little, little class of kids anymore to see them, but I always think of that. So it's been 10 years. Let's make an effort to hold them close also. Anyone else? I would, I would echo Councillor Lindell's words. Uh, Hamiltons are great, great friends, great people, great contributors to our community and their loss is our loss. So please keep their, their family in our thoughts. And on that day at Sandy Hook, there were 26 lives taken, uh, teachers as well as little, little babies. And so as we remember that horrible day, uh, let's rededicate ourselves to stopping that carnage. Uh, and so far as we have that power, it's our responsibility to use it. 
Uh, one other word about a wonderful woman who passed away, not from Santa Fe, uh, an old friend of mine, Francis Hesselvein, who was a former head of the uh, Girl Scouts of America and a remarkable woman leader. She was so respected and loved, she ended up teaching leadership at West Point uh, and was just a, a force of nature and a wonderful leader and a a great role model for girls and, and women of all ages and generations. Uh, we salute her service to our country at the national level and to every community where there's a Girl Scout program. She shaped it, touched it, and made it better in her tenure as head of that organization. So let's take a minute together and just send thoughts, prayers, wishes of healing and health recovery to all those in our community who are suffering or dealing with pain right now. Thanks, everybody. Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll? Yes, Mayor Weber. Present. Councilor Cassett? Here. Councilor Chavez? Here. Councilor Lee Garcia? Here. Councilor Michael Garcia? Present. Councilor Lindell? Here. Councilor Rivera? Here. Councilor Merworth? Here. Councilwoman Virail? Present. You have a quorum, mate. Thank you. Uh, can I get a motion to approve the agenda, please? Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the agenda. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And now um, we go to the consent agenda. I believe, Madam Clerk, one item was pulled off of consent. That is correct, Mayor. Uh, item A was pulled from consent by Councilwoman Villarreal. Oh, oh, and Councilor Garcia's hand is up. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to remove item H to recuse myself. Uh, that's why I didn't pull it earlier. Don't need staff input, just need a. I got out. you. Items A and H are taken off of consent. Uh, any other changes to the consent agenda? Move to approve as amended. Second. There's a motion to approve as amended. Uh, Madam Clerk, can you call the roll? Councilor Cassett? Yes. Councilor Chavez? Yes. Councilor Lee Garcia? Yes. Councilor Michael Garcia? Yes. Councilor Lindell? Yes. Councilor Rivera? Yes. Councilor Merworth? Yes. Councilman Virail? Yes. Mayor Weber? Yes. Motion has been approved. Thank you. Um, Madam Clerk, we have a presentation or two. Uh, that is correct, Mayor. We have two presentations this evening. The first one is item 8A. It's our fiscal year 21 audit update presented by Emily Oster, our finance director, and Ricky. I don't, nope, just Emily today. Sorry. Um, Where's the on switch? Or it's on? Okay. Yep, you're good. You're live. Good evening, counselors. And I'm happy to be here with you this evening to provide the audit update. Um, we are continuing to work very hard on both 2021 and 2022. The contractors from Clifton Larson Allen, who are assisting with audit preparation services, are working on FY21 accruals rolling into FY22. Um, they're also working on fixed assets and cash. Um, and that work is continuing on as, as expected. They're working through things as they come up. But Car Riggs Ingram uh, has also continued to work. We submitted, I believe I reported in my last report, we submitted an analysis of the relationship between BDD and the city as well as Swama and the city to Car Riggs Ingram for their review. That was the first item that they had requested. Um, Ricky Bejarano was in contact with the lead auditor from Car Riggs Ingram yesterday. And so far everything is, is going smoothly. Those are the updates that I have for you this evening. And I'm happy to stand for any questions that you may have. Thank you. Any questions for our finance director? We want to welcome you home. We know you got a well-deserved break with your family. Congratulations on that. And uh, welcome home. We're glad you're back. 
Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Councillors. I'm glad to be back. Thank you. Madam Clerk, we have a, another uh, presentation. Uh, yes, Mayor, item 8B is the State of the Municipal Court, uh, presented by Judge Virginia V. Hill. Good evening, City Councilors. A pleasure always to be before you. Thank you for the opportunity. I um, Actually, I come in here and I get a deja vu. Many of you who are here probably don't even know this. You used, this used to be Santa Fe High High School speech class. Um, and so when I come in here, I'm remembering my first speech when I arranged flowers uh, <laughs> for Miss Marjorie Carr, who was forever the speech teacher at Santa Fe High. And this was a long time ago. So, um, but the room looks pretty much the same. Um, I just have a minor updates for you all. Um, the first one being that um, many of you know that homeless court no longer exists. The pandemic sort of took that aside. What we've done, and, and before I go any further, I want to introduce Mr. Chad Chittam, who has um, really implemented a lot of the things. Mr. Chittam, if you wouldn't mind standing, he is the staff attorney and also uh, administrator. And it is really because um, he's, he's uh, a miracle worker is what I call him. Uh, he's been able to implement the outreach court, and many of you may have seen the press release on that. The outreach court is the court that is trying to capture those uh, defendants who need an incredible amount of assistance through services that are available through the city. And uh, we've worked with um, many of city staff in order to make that happen. And so it, it's just beginning now. We've, we've only had three or four participants but it's a diversionary program so that if they participate in outreach and they are connected with the services that are needed for them, um, then they do not get prosecuted, which is a huge incentive for them and also creates a larger benefit for the community. Uh, the other new thing that I wanted to mention, and everything is actually on the memo that you've received is um, we now have a database that's open to the public. It's the public database. Prior to that, we would just post uh, whatever cases would appear, um, would be on court on that date on the docket. Uh, please excuse me, I've been fighting a cold and if you have questions, I may ask you to repeat it because I'm highly congested. Um, but anyway, the database that we've implemented is accessible. Attorneys are very happy with it. Everyone else who accesses it, is happy with it too. You can now, if you have received a citation and you're scheduled to come for an arraignment or for whatever other hearing, you can access our database and see when your court date is. That's huge. Not very many municipal courts in the state have that option. But other than that, everything else pretty much remains administrative. We're moving forward in our landscaping, which is huge for me. Um, and uh, we also adopted the language access specialist program. Uh, I almost cannot hire anyone unless they are truly bilingual. We just get inquiries on a daily basis and never know, uh, you know, if it's going to be someone who's required to speak Spanish. So uh, when we interview, it's a real plus to have folks who can speak Spanish. And I would tell you, we have some excellent language access specialists. And within the court system, they're required by state law to take very intensive training and repeated continuing training. So we've adopted a policy for that and are hoping to incentivize those folks to stay with Santa Fe Municipal Court because my history has been that they leave. Um, and now hopefully we can keep them. Um, and that's part of the goal. But other than that, um, I really stand for questions um, on, on any questions you may have. Thank you, Your Honor. It's wonderful to have you here. Thank you. We always come out and see you at your court. Now you're, you're here visiting us. It's nice, yes. nice to have a return visit. Yes. Are, are there questions for the judge? Anybody have anything they would like to uh, get a little more information about? I have one, if if I may, Your Honor, this may, and maybe Mr. Chittam knows this, it's a little bit of a, uh, almost a uh, trivia question, and the answer may be you don't know off the top of your head, but I was looking at the, there are four cell phone violations, 
for October 5, September 6, August 2, 8, 6. Do you have any idea uh, who are the who's coming into your court with a cell phone violation? It really, really, it's there's no particular demographic. Cell phone violations come forth with a variety of violators. And um, normally we go by what the police officer has charged, and that's a $256 fine and fee. So that's the one that is most common. And it really does get cited to teachers, non-professional. Non uh, it just, cell phone violation happens without their identifying a demographic. And they're usually just talking on their phone or are they texting or what's, what are you, what are the officers seeing? Uh, you know, the officers really adhere very well to the hands off ordinance. And I've explained that to people that come to court, that that is a very strict ordinance and it's intended for the safety of the driver and the people and having a hands off vile ordinance violator, I, uh, explain to them that even if you're looking at your GPS, it's a no-no. So a police officer uh, may ask a defendant, were you texting, were you talking, uh, whether they respond appropriately or not, uh, we never know. We just know that because the ordinance is strict enough to allow for the police officer to see that they are using a handheld device, that violation gets cited. Thank you. I also, I, I really appreciate your unpacking that for me. I have a similar kind of a question. I noticed the numbers on shoplifting are really not trivial numbers, 22, 17, 18. Uh, uh, this is a chronic, this is a problem everywhere, I know. But uh, uh, what, here again, do you have any insight into what, what lies behind the numbers? Um, I, I can tell you that it's exponential. There are times that the shoplifting charges go up higher, and this time of year they do go up more, uh, you know, from Thanksgiving on, and we do see that occurring more than it may slide a little bit. Um, I, I, there, there's a social explanation for that, but I don't have it. Thank you. I, I really appreciate your help with understanding what the court, is, not just what you're doing, but how it comes to you. And also, thank you for the way you swear in our officers and the welcome that you greet them with when they join our police force. It's a, it is a highlight for me, Mr. Mayor. You make it a highlight for them, too. So thank you. Thank you. Other questions for the judge? Councilor Rivera, you have the floor. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, judge, in the past, uh, you've been pretty successful in receiving funds from the legislature for several things that you've asked. Um, are you requesting anything for this upcoming session? Yes, we certainly are. Um, and we've submitted it through the process with the city. And I think one of the priorities that we particularly have are safety. We've had a lot of the active shooter training and uh, um, several of them, not only the ones that FEMA required of us, but we've also had uh, training from the administrative office of the courts, and they have pointed out some of the changes that need to occur in order to promote safety in the courthouse. And that's what we're going to be pursuing is funding for uh, promotion of that safety. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Thanks, Councilor. Others? Anyone? Anyone else want to just thank the judge? Because it's really nice to see her here. Thank you. All right, Your Honor. Appreciate you. Thank you. Madam Clerk, I believe we go to item A, which was Councilor, uh, Councilwoman uh, Villarreal uh, took off of consent. Correct. Item 9A is the re request for approval of the November 2nd governing body study session minutes. Thank you, Mayor. You have the floor. I'm waiting for my computer to load. Good Essentially, up. it was um, just corrections. It indicated you were not present at that meeting, and you were, or maybe you weren't. You were physically there. How about that? <laughs> and it also said, if I could wait till this opens, um, that... It also said that Councillor Lindell um, called the meeting to order, and I actually think the mayor did because we all were there. Um, it wasn't a hybrid meeting. Um, Councillor Garcia, Councillor Rivera, and, my, and myself were not on Zoom. 
and we didn't add any of the participants from the chart team that were present that were listed as present so i think we need to add that in so i don't know if we should wait or just um, make these corrections now how would you like to handle this Mayor Robert, it might be good just to postpone um, consideration of these till the next make, meeting so we can get a revised them, version. Get them right and bring them back. I think that's good advice. So what we would probably need is a motion to postpone. I'll move to postpone till our next um, governing body meeting. Second. There's a motion to postpone and there is a second. Is there any discussion? Uh, is that roll call? I think it is. Councilor Chavez? Yes. Councilor Lee Garcia? Yes. Councilor Michael Garcia? Yes. Councilor Lindell? Yes. Councilor Rivera? Yes. Councilor Merworth? Yes. Councilwoman Villarreal? Yes. Councilor Cassett? Yes. Mayor Weber? Yes. Motion has been approved. Good catch, Councilwoman. I actually was there. <laughs> Contrary to popular opinion. Uh, very good. And we also had an uh, item that the uh, Councillor Michael Garcia asked to be removed because of a uh, desire to step out. Madam Clerk, do you want to read item H to us, please? Uh, yes, Mayor. Item H is request for the approval of fiscal year 2023 grant contract with Corporation for National and Community Services in the total amount of 89000 $58 for the foster grandparent and retired senior companion volunteer programs. Councillor Garcia, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to recuse myself from consideration of this item, given that I work for the federal agency that administers the foster grandparent program. Thank you. Uh, I will, you're just going to take a quick step. All right. We'll, we'll be, we'll call you very, very shortly. Uh, this item is uh, open for a motion. Move to approve. Second. There's a motion to approve and there is a second. Is there any discussion? Madam Clerk, can I call the roll? Yes. Uh, Council, Council Romero Worth was the second on that. Wendell was the second. You were the motion. She I was, was the, the motion second. maker. Okay. Perfect. <clears throat> Sometimes you both sound the same when I'm not paying attention. <laughs> Councilor Lee Garcia? Yes. Councillor Lindell? Yes. Councillor Rivera? Yes. Councillor Merworth? Councilwoman Villarreal? Yes. Councillor Cassett? Yes. Councillor Chavez? Yes. Mayor Weber? Yes. Motion has been approved. Can somebody uh, give the high sign to Councillor Garcia so he can come back in? I don't want to inconvenience him any longer. All clear, Councillor. Uh, Madam Clerk, take us to the next item, please. That would be matters from the city manager. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Councilors. Hope you're all are doing well. Uh, first of all, thank you to all of you who were able to attend the legislative breakfast on Monday morning. I thought it really was a great success. Councilor Cassett, I let folks know that you were out of an abundance of caution um, home, making sure you were healthy. Um, but I thought it was a really productive meeting, and I felt like our legislative uh, delegation was responding well to what you all had to say and what the city is putting forward. So I'm looking forward to what comes in the next 60-day session. Um, I want to again thank uh, Deputy City Manager Layla Archuleta Maestas and Executive Assistant Cassie Salazar for doing a lot of lifting and making the event happen, and for Regina Wheeler leading the charge on making the uh, legislative booklet come together. Um, a couple of just quick big things we have going on. The Munis upgrade continues to move forward. Um, our HR, IT, and finance departments in particular have continued to work very aggressively to make sure that we're ready for what is still at this point going to be a transition in the end of January. Um, and so we, we actually, the IT staff led a really productive, what's called a lunch and learn event last week, where our staff were invited to a variety of sessions. Lunch was provided um, outside of just the basic information that staff received about how to utilize the new system and the new hub and what's different, it was a really great opportunity for a lot of staff to meet other people who were in their workflows that they've never met in person before, either because of COVID or other reasons. And so I think from a perspective of building a team and creating some camaraderie, it was a really productive event. And so 
I just want to thank uh, Manuel Gonzalez and his team for making that event happen. It was a big deal. Um, the only other third thing I have right now is that we are going to be shutting down city government early on December 23rd in honor of Christmas. Um, and some of the city facilities will actually be closed on Christmas Eve on the 24th. And so the city clerk and her team will have more information um, to share about that in the future. Um, and outside of that, I hope you'll have a really wonderful holiday and look forward to working with you in 2023. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Matters. Matters from city attorney. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, governing body members. I just have a couple announcements. The second charter commission meeting will be this Thursday. We will be taking public comment at that meeting um, available via Zoom or in person. Um, we will be going through the um, topics that were listed in the resolution and giving some background information and some initial research on those. And um, the members will be potentially forming subcommittees this week, if not um, in January. We have meetings scheduled twice a month between January and May for 2023. We may have additional meetings as well, but we've at least got those on the calendar. Um, I believe it's the second and fourth Thursday of every month or Tuesday. I'm going to have to pull that up, but they're regularly scheduled twice a month in 2022. Um, it is on Thursdays. So it's the second and fourth Thursday of each month for those months. Um, but we may, like I said, add some more. So please encourage anyone you know who has suggestions or opinions to attend one of those meetings and take advantage of the public comment or to reach out to any of those commissioners. They're welcome. They can receive any communications from constituents directly as well. Um, and actually any members of the governing body are also welcome to participate in the public comment or to reach out to commission members if you have any ideas, concerns, or suggestions. Um, and then the second thing is, I believe that um, Jesse Yan had uh, circulated a policy form, a research request form for any feedback that anyone from the governing body has on how we should um, receive requests for policy. And, and those um, allow for alerting us to what type of research would be helpful to you, whether it's a jurisdictional comparison or a specific question about New Mexico law and that type of thing. So if you have any feedback on that request form, please let us know. We'll probably start using it soon um, if we don't get additional feedback on it. So those are my two announcements. Thank you. Thank you. I guess we will go directly to the city clerk. Oh, that sounds good. Um, just a few very quick updates. I just want to thank my team uh, for the tremendous efforts over the last few months. I think I've mentioned this before, but... Uh, everyone has been helping out in different areas, filling in spots, stepping up. And so I couldn't be more appreciative of all of their um, efforts. And I will note that we have three new hires in our department. Um, we have Lawrence Moss, who started as our multimedia coordinator. He's actually training right now in the back. We're really excited. Um, Scott C.A. and Rachel Narvaez both started in constituent service specialist positions. We also have three offers out for our team. So uh, a huge thank you to HR for their assistance. Um, there's been reclassifying, processing, and bringing on these positions. So um, just want to note that. And then also would like to say that um, my team will be sponsoring. We're doing an ugly Christmas sweater and a door decorating contest next Wednesday. Um, so we'll be sending information out for that next uh, tomorrow. Excuse me, a save the date. And then our office um, will be delivering prizes to the winners next Thursday. So just want to note, if you have an ugly Christmas sweater, uh, please send us some pics. That's what, how we'll be judging. And if you feel like decorating your door, send us a picture too. So um, that's all I have. But yeah. Thank you. I think Councillor Lindell is already claiming first place prize <laughs> with the ugly sweater contest. <laughs> Everybody's welcome to try for second place if you want. Uh, thank you, Madam Clerk. Communications from the governing body. I'm going to just uh, go around the horn. Uh, Councilor Chavez, you have the floor. Thank you, Mayor Weber. I don't have much. I just want to wish you all a happy holiday, a happy new year, um, and really encourage our community to embrace those lovely moments that are made during the holidays with family and friends. Um, I hope you all enjoy them and cherish them. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Rivera. 
Uh, thank you, Mayor. I wanted to uh, thank uh, staff for the legislative breakfast. I think it went really well. Uh, attendance was great by our legislative delegation, which uh, always is. And then I wanted to thank uh, YouthWorks as well for providing breakfast, breakfast burritos and fruit and some other things. So, um, And then thanks to the Southside Library staff for uh, opening up the doors and really making us feel welcome. It's great when things are uh, done on the South Sides. So appreciate uh, Mayor, what you promised, I think, in your first election was to move things around. So I appreciate that. Uh, Merry Christmas to everyone, all uh, city staff, uh, all our constituents, the people we represent, and all of you. I hope you have a, a great holiday season and hope it's blessed and hope you uh, have a happy new year and get it all uh, off to a, a good start right away. So um, hope that for everyone. And then just wanted to remind the public about our New Year's Eve event. You know, it's a great celebration down on the plaza. If you've never had a chance to make it, it's it's a lot of fun. So uh, please, if you uh, have the chance and you're listening, please uh, make plans on going down on New Year's Eve. Oh, yeah, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I hope your knee feels better. All, uh, all of us who know that you've had a little knee fix, uh, good luck with the PT and we know you'll be back to your usual self. Thank you. Councillor Garcia. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to give a thanks to, as well, for setting up the legislative breakfast. It was great to meet with the delegation and uh, form together to, to outline the priorities for the city and also kind of brag about what we've been able to accomplish with the money we've we've gotten from them, which leads to the next point of uh, the teen center. We had an awesome site visit of the teen center i'm uh kind of wishing i was a teenager to be able to access that awesome space that's gonna be out there in the south side but uh i i might show up challenge some of those young folks to some some pool or something um but it looks like it's going to be a fantastic space and it's it's right where it's needed so many thanks to the staff that uh organized that um and as well merry christmas happy hanukkah happy kwanzaa to everybody um, the, the holiday season is off to, off to fast and free a start, which means, um, unfortunately, little bugs are going around. People are getting sick and uh, just encourage everybody to do everything you can to stay safe, stay healthy and uh, enjoy the holiday season. And uh, Councillor Rivera will be seeing you on New Year's Eve on Raising the Zia. Uh, that's all I got, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Rivera. Thank you, Mayor. Just wanted to um, thank the staff and my colleagues. And just in general, I think it's just been a blessing. This year it was really hard, I have to say. <laughs> um, pretty intense, just a lot happening, a lot of loss. Um, just, you know, when people say, oh, we're past COVID, I actually don't feel that way. I feel like we're still in this um, recovery and there's all these other things that are happening. and. Um, and just the mental health of, of people in our community is pretty palpable of what people are struggling with. So I just wanted to recognize that and just thank everybody for um, doing their best because that's all we can really do is do our best. And just wanted to wish everybody a safe and restful holiday, hopefully. Um, as we say in Northern New Mexico, Mis Christmas or Merry Christmas, um, Happy Holidays, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa. And I also wanted to wish a happy birthday to our colleague, um, Councilwoman Cassett, who will be turning, I'll just say 21. <laughs> I always say the 21 <laughs> soon in December. I'll just say that. So I hope you have a blessed year. Thank you. That's lovely. Councilor uh, Lindell. Thank you, Mayor. And I definitely am in on the ugly sweater thing, no <laughs> doubt about it, I'm there. Um, it is, as I've said before, the season of naughty and nice. Um, I'm not gonna ask for any raised hands, but um, some of you may be getting a pony and some of you may not. Um, some are probably gonna get like me, a, a keychain and some other smaller items. Um, so, <laughs> uh, it's a festive season. Um, I wish it to be festive for each and every one of you because um, 
Walking around Santa Fe during this season is really special. It's lovely. And um, seeing people that you know and even seeing people that you don't know. Um, people seem to have a little pep in their step this time of year. Um, encourage it. And um, I'm very thankful to staff for the year. I'm thankful to my colleagues. Um, 2023 will be a good year for us. We've had some ups and downs in 2022. Some We've lost some folks in this town that were near and dear to us, and uh, they would expect us to carry on and, and um, be cheerful and be kind to each other. So that's my wish for all of us. And just remember, it's naughty or nice season. Thank you, Councillor. We won't ask where you line up either. We, we don't need a show of hands. <laughs> yes, sir, Mayor Worthy, you have the floor. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, just want to wish the rail yard uh, 20th anniversary congratulations and uh, amazing. I was able to attend that event, uh, like, I don't know, it must have been a week or so ago. Um, and I I remember watching that progression. So really amazing that it's been 20 years and what's happened there. Also, I uh, want to thank the staff for the Safe Spaces Community Meeting. Um, that also was very interesting and very informative and well attended by the community. I think it was a um, great way to get some information out and build some understanding about safe spaces and how they work and lessons learned from other places and um, just have a chance to talk about that. So thank you to the staff for making that happen. Thank you for the community for coming out. Uh, before I get to the holiday part, I do want to maybe make some clarifications. There's been some newspaper articles this week um, about our public process, and they are, there's some misunderstanding, I think. Um, and I want to be very clear that when the governing body adopted our new procedural rules in January of this year, we very much were looking to increase public participation. Uh, in fact, in our legislative process, we now added a hearing. So a bill is introduced, and then uh, at the next meeting, very next meeting, there's a public hearing to hear from the public about their thoughts about the legislation so that as it moves through our standing committees, we have opportunities to address um, if there are problems or issues or need for information and do that on the front end and get the work done in committee so that when it comes to this night, to this governing body on final passage, um, the, the legislation has been given a, a lot of thought and community input and uh, we used to only do the public hearing on final passage. And what we discovered is that's kind of too late, right? Because we do the public hearing and then if there was a problem with the bill, it was pretty much a done deal. Um, you know, obviously we could send it back if it was really problematic, but I just, I wanna make that comment that I think we have really worked to make the public process um, better. And there's also been some comments that the that there are a couple of things that are in our rules that um, they are just not. So for instance, the cross-examination of witnesses, which we may hear about later tonight, our rules do not address that. We did not put that in the rules. That is something that comes um, as a result of particular situations when you are a party to a case that's in front of this body and you it's part of that post posture, part of that legal proceeding that you might get to cross-examine, um, but only if you're a party to the case. Um, we did put in the rules one thing, which has been a longstanding custom, which is uh, at the governing body level, the rules say that you can't cede time to somebody else to give them a longer speaking time during public comment. 
that is in the rules that but all we did was state what has been a long standing practice it's not necessarily new in the way this body does its work it also is not discouraging or limiting people from participating anybody can come in front of this body and speak for 2 minutes either from petitions to the floor about anything they want or in a particular public hearing um, on a particular matter, and they are given two minutes. You can, if you're part of a group, um, line up and you know designate an order for your group to speak that you feel makes sense in presenting whatever it is you need to present. Um, and we allow anybody, we, we'll, we'll sit here and hear as many people as want to talk to us for two minutes, and that often takes a lot of time. So we are not discouraging, we are not limiting public participation. Um, in fact, we have been working to encourage it. And I feel very strongly that we need to correct the record because there, it's, it's, I, it's like a, the game of telephone, right? It, it, just, it seems to be traveling around that this is how we operate. And it absolutely is not. So I wanted to take this opportunity to address um, that. So now that I'm now they've done that on a lighter note, um, just want to wish everybody a happy holidays. I have to say I've had the pleasure to drive around the plaza, walk through the plaza um, at night, and I got to say the lights are absolutely spectacular. I think our our team uh, really really did it this year. Um, it's it's always wonderful, but for some reason, it's absolutely spectacular this week or this year. So I want to encourage people, if you haven't been out at night, um, go down and see it. It's, it's pretty amazing. And uh, again, want to wish everybody happy holidays. And that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Cassett, who's having a birthday soon. I am. I am. I'm a I'm a Christmas baby, kind of. Planned C-section the day after Christmas. Who does that? Like, really? Who who does that? I'm I'm still. I'll get over it. It's been 38 years. I think I can get over it by now. Um, I I do want to thank Council Romero Worth for um, correcting the record there, as um, the other sponsor still sitting on this body um, who worked on the procedural rules. Um, really there was a lot of intention there to increase public participation and the ability for that commenting period on any legislation that we're passing. Um, so thank you for, for taking the time to really walk through what was changed, what was stated, but not changed. Um, and, and making sure that people understand that we really do want to hear that feedback. And, and I would also state that not only can you come and speak, you can email us, um, and if in the case of land use cases um, where we we do act in that quasi judicial, that information does go into the packet. We do read our packets, so um, we do not want to um, uh, keep moving with the misconception that that public comment is is being stymied in any way. Yes. Zoom. And Zoom, that's, thank you. And and also there is the option now, um, I always talk about what do we want to take from the pandemic? And I've, I've now had this conversation twice, Zoom. I, I want to bring Zoom with us from the pandemic. So there is also the opportunity, if you cannot come in person, um, governing body is a, is a hybrid meeting where you do have the ability to speak to any of these matters on Zoom. Um, that said, I want to wish everybody a very happy holiday season. Um, as Councilor Merriworth stated, it's it, the plaza truly is stunning. We've we've driven around or walked around there downtown a couple times, and it's truly beautiful. Um, I'm very excited to celebrate. I have my mom and stepfather coming into town, so really excited they'll be here with um, little man for for uh, Christmas and Hanukkah. We we get to do it all: Christmas, Hanukkah, and a birthday. Um, by the end, I. I don't ever want to touch sugar ever again, um, but it's it's really just a wonderful, <laughs> yeah, minus fact, I did make cookies, so there's like 300 back there. Please eat them, anybody who is here. <laughs> um, it's it's a, such a wonderful time, but as um, many have alluded to and, and Counselor Chavez brought up last time that sometimes the holiday season is really, really hard for a lot of people. 
And so I think it's important. And, and these last few years have just been, been tough in general. Um, please check in on each other. Please be kind. If you are experiencing a crisis or you just need someone to talk to, um, there is the national crisis line. I believe 988 is a number. So um, feel free to you know call that number if there's not somebody personally in your life that you feel that you can reach out to. And for any of your friends or family that you know have been struggling, or even if you don't know that they've been struggling, I just encourage everyone to reach out, check on their loved ones, um, because there is so much cheer around the holiday season. I think a lot of people feel less inclined than normal to discuss when they are um, not feeling in a in a happy or healthy place mentally. So um, please reach out to your friends. And if you are one of those individuals that's struggling, uh, reach out to a loved one or, or reach out to the crisis line. Again, that number is 988. And then last but not least, I just, I wanna thank my colleagues and staff and the community. Uh, this has been an, an interesting year as we have shifted our pandemic lifestyle, um, not ended it. I'm, I'm not sure how to categorize it, but there has been um, so much work that has been done. And it, it really, it's taken a lot to kind of bring us back from the virtual world. Um, and I, I really want to um, applaud ITT, uh, the city clerk, um, and all the work that's gone into, you know, bringing us back into in-person meetings and experimenting with uh, hybrid. It, it really has been quite a year. So thank you, everyone. I am looking forward to 2023. Still, still have a lot of fun things to do, but let's hopefully get some rest <laughs> over the next couple of weeks so that we come back refreshed and ready to go. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Garcia. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'm battling a little bit of a bug here too, so I um, wanted to echo all the words of uh, my co-counselors here and wishing everybody a happy holidays. Um, I do want to make it uh, a point to have everyone, when you see, um, thanks to all the city staff that work so hard to do what we do during the holidays as well, and <clears throat> especially during the events that we have, Thank the police officers that are out there because they're working on holidays and we're out there enjoying our time. Um, thank the fire department. Thank all the workers, the parks, rec, everybody. And, um, you know, I think it, uh, it, it it doesn't go without saying that they work uh, endlessly, endless hours to, uh, to allow us to enjoy some of these uh, events that are put on for the holidays. And again, um, be kind to somebody during the holidays as well, because you don't know what they are going through. And uh, that's all I have for tonight. But uh, looking uh, looking forward to uh, 2023 and um, can't believe the year has already gone, <laughs> gone by this fast. So uh, thank you all. Mayor, can I have one more before you? Councilor yeah, Rivera, you have the floor. I wanted to thank the Employee Benefit Committee for putting on the uh, city uh, holiday party uh, this year, I wasn't able to attend because of the proximity to my knee uh, surgery, but I heard it was a lot of fun. I don't know if any of you were able to attend, but I heard it was a lot of fun <laughs> and uh, wanted to uh, just thank them for continuing to do that. Thank you. You beat me to the punch, Counselor. It was, uh, well, there wasn't any punch there, but uh, I didn't miss the punch. Uh, it was a great evening. I saw some happy faces. I saw some great outfits. I saw some dance moves I've never seen before. Uh, and uh, it, our, our, our team works incredibly hard, as Councillor Lee Garcia just said, to make things happen. Uh, this was their night, and uh, it was really quite a great celebration. We've already, the holiday season has seen an awful lot of uh, important celebrations, uh, gatherings, fundraisers, galas, uh, Santa Fe at this time of year is absolutely magical. Uh, our tourism folks got us all over to Meow Wolf for a fundraiser to support our outstanding hospitality industry and get raise money so more young people can be trained to get jobs in that industry. I think I saw Councillor Lindell there. I, I seem to remember her. 
Um, and uh, the Meow Wolf folks were were excited to host us again. Uh, Councilor Mayor Worth mentioned a couple of great events that uh, we were both at, and uh, including that rail yard celebration, and then the the pallet uh, conversation. Quite educational and useful, important. Uh, today, uh, two more police officers were sworn in. At uh, that's why I was. So nice to see the judge here. She did a great job getting two more police officers onto our police force. Uh, we continue to, uh, at a time when it's very difficult for departments to get recruits and uh, find people who want to do this most difficult job of safety, security, and taking care of people when they're having the worst day of their lives. Uh, we are very fortunate to have a a young man, a young woman, uh, raise their right hands and become Santa Fe police officers. Um, coming attractions, uh, gift creation workshop at the Santa Fe Public Library, December the 16th, 2 to 4. Teen night at the GCCC, Friday the 16th from 6 to 8. Free caroling with the Desert Corral, Saturday, December 17th, 11 to 11.30 at the Rail Yard Water Tower. 130 to 2 at the Santa Fe Plaza, Hanukkah on the Plaza, uh, this uh, Sunday the 18th at 3 p.m. to light the menorah. New Year's Eve, Can Councillor Rivera was sending out greetings to everybody. I remember last year it was snowing, and we were out there, and it was swirling snow, and uh, there were still a lot of good people on the Plaza having a wonderful time, snow or no snow. Uh, just to be able to bring in the new year. Um, it starts at eight and obviously the the big moment of count, we count down, we count up, whichever way we go with uh, Zia uh, is obviously at midnight. And once again, we couldn't do it without the Kiwanis Club uh, making it happen. They they do so much for us. It's hard hard to think that this is the last meeting of this year of the governing body. It has been a very productive, eventful year, a lot of hard work by everybody on this on this team. And I'm grateful to everybody for all the committee meetings, all the hard work of bringing uh, policy and legislative changes in front of us. I think the city is at a time when many communities are struggling, uh, unable to make decisions, unable to find a path uh, forward collaboratively, constructively, um, respectfully, uh, this this city and this elected official group uh, does a great job. Uh, a tremendous amount of work that really doesn't ever see the light of day, but is happening uh, uh, every single day. And I, I appreciate everybody's hard work. Our team, our city manager, thank you for joining and stepping into the role this year. Uh, I think at one point you were keeping track of the days, but maybe you've stopped doing that. So you no longer are doing the Count of Monte Cristo thing where you put strikes on the wall of your your cell, your office, not your cell. <laughs> it's still in there somewhere. City attorney, you and your team, thank you. Uh, you uh, keep the city on the legal straight and narrow and your advice is absolutely uh, phenomenal. Your team works extremely hard and city clerk, you mentioned your team. Uh, you do so much with public information, uh, opening up the portals of the city to everyone and, and uh, launching a new website this year, which is a massive and huge update. So see everybody on the other side of New Year's Eve, when we reconvene, take care of yourself, take care of each other, take care of your families. Um, the city is very grateful. I know from the emails I get uh, complimenting all of you for your hard work. And uh, to Councillor Cassett's point, um, there are people for whom this is a particularly difficult time of year. Um, please be generous and graceful and grateful and thoughtful and kind. I had a meeting today with a group, several groups that are focused specifically on mental and behavioral health issues in Santa Fe and doing everything we can to put out good information about how to get help or offer help so that 
uh, we literally save lives every day by helping people who are having a hard time. So thank you, everybody, and happy 2022. In the almost rearview mirror as the sands go through the hourglass, and here's to a great 2023 for all of us and for Santa Fe. Uh, Madam Clerk, we have one introduction of legislation in front of us. That is correct. We have um, item 15A is consideration of a resolution sponsored by Mayor Weber, Councillor Cassa, and Councillor Chavez. It's a resolution adopting the Midtown Community Development Plan for the Midtown Redevelopment Project. And this is one where we didn't quite have all of our ducks in a row last time. I think our ducks are in a row this time. Uh, for anyone who is not familiar with what this resolution uh, does, we have, as part of the Midtown uh, development effort, uh, we last meeting adopted a zone change and a master plan. Uh, this is the third leg of the stool that involves a community development plan that speaks to our aspirations uh, going forward for Midtown, for the adjacent neighborhoods, for the engagement and involvement of people, so that Midtown develops in a way that reflects the aspirations, hopes, wishes, and dreams of everybody in the city. It is uh, providing guidelines for the, the way the community has expressed its desire for Midtown uh, redevelopment. Um, along with me, Councillor Cassett, Councillor Chavez, would you like to speak to this? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, so this this piece, you know, we've we frequently talked about the value of Midtown um, and how there is so much social value here, and there is only so much that we can do. There's there's plenty that we can do with um, some of the zoning and the master plan and the development. But the other piece is what are these surrounding policies that help us reach the overall social goals of the Midtown campus? And how do we also make sure that we take care of the surrounding neighborhoods and the surrounding communities um, so that this truly becomes an asset in their neighborhood as opposed to a um, source of displacement um, and that it is something that the entire public can access. Um, of course, as the one of the district four counselors where Midtown sits. Um, this is very close to my heart um, because it it is a number of my constituents. Um, so I am really looking forward to moving forward with this plan. Um, and as was discussed uh, during the land use case hearing last, last time for Midtown, um, there is still a call to the public that your involvement is still incredibly crucial and critical. And in the implementation of this community development plan, that is going to be extremely palpable. So uh, really want to encourage the community to continue to engage, to continue to come out um, and to continue to reach out to us about your hopes and dreams for Midtown and how it impacts your community. And Councillor Chavez, you have the floor. Thank you, Mary. You two did a wonderful job as usual. I would just add that this is just, it's very important to me. Um, the community, it's really keeping the community at heart um, throughout this project, this piece, um, which I think is very important. I think last time we discussed, I commented that um, that just continues through the project that we're listening to community voice and we're keeping true to um, what the community wants for this project. Um, I think that is so, so important. So I encourage people to continue being involved. Um, this is something that really can give back to Santa Fe in so many wonderful and beautiful ways. Um, and it's going to require your guidance and voice throughout the process. So I encourage you to continue being involved. And thank you, Mayor Weber. Thank you. Um, we have a timing problem again tonight. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Um, I wanted to make an amendment to the committee pathway for this item, oh. um, also to be heard at the Community Development Commission meeting on Wednesday, January 4th. Okay. There, I'd like to make a motion. Motion yeah. is to add the January 4th Community Development Commission meeting as part of the review of this uh, item. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion. There's a second. Is there a discussion? Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? 
Councillor Michael Garcia. Yes. Councillor Lindell. Yes. Councillor Rivera. Yes. Councillor Mayor Ward. Yes. Councillor Munibia Real. Yes. Councillor Cassett. Yes. Councillor Chavez. Yes. Councillor Lee Garcia. Yes. Mayor Weber. Yes. Motion has been approved. Councillor Mayor Worth, you had your hand up. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, make a change to our agenda, suggest that we go to the Midtown um, public hearings. Okay. And, then... and uh, well, we could do that. We could do appointments and then the Midtown, and then res and then go back. Yeah. So the if I understand the the motion is to move to item twenty which has A, B, and C appointments, then come back to item 19, A, and B. And yes. then see where we are in the time schedule for the evening meeting. Usually we try to hit the uh, petitions from the floor at 7 p.m., correct? Yes. So that's the motion. Is there a second? Second. Can we, uh, is there a discussion? Yeah, just, uh, I think part of what we, always done is public hearings are usually done at after seven o'clock after the petitions petitions from the floor and i would hate to leave anybody out or have people miss that part of the process because they assume that we were going to go in the same order we always do so that's my concern about it uh yeah the city attorney has her hand up uh, Mr. Mayor, Councillors, uh, we did just refresh our memories. I was not present at the last meeting, but um, Pat Figelli went and looked back at where we were in those public hearings. And my understanding is that we had finished the public hearing section for at least the Midtown, the two Midtown um, matters. So unless there's an intent to reopen for some reason, then I think you're okay on that point. But you could reopen if there was a reason you wanted to. Um, but my understanding is you're at the discussion and motion making portion of the hearing. I, I agree with you, Councillor Rivera. Normally, I would say we, we couldn't do that, but because to the city attorney's point, we've already done most of that. We're just pretty much at the voting stage. I was hoping maybe we could, rather than uh, idle for 45 minutes, maybe use the best use of that time. Councillor Garcia. Mr. Mayor, I think, I don't recall us asking questions. I thought it came to our attention that the resolution wasn't there once the presentations were done. And then we said, oops, let's put a pause until next meeting. Because I don't remember folks asking questions around the Midtown plan. We Once that the presentations were done, we brought to the attention the, the missing resolution. I think we were at the point of voting, actually. I think we had a, a, a I, you may be, I'm working to recall it correctly. I know that we had not yet had a, a motion on the floor. I think that the reason that we stopped was we were ready to entertain a motion, and then the a discovery was made that we lacked the correct documentation. Uh, I, I'm I would rather use the time productively if we can, if that's okay with folks. So there's a motion to change the order of the business so that we're not idling till seven. Uh, in effect, moving first to our appointments and then moving on to the first two pub, uh, completion of items A and B, which were started at our prior council meeting where we'd already had public testimony. We could, at that point, entertain a motion. We could have more discussion for sure. Um, is there any more discussion about the motion? If not, Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll? Councilor Lindell. Councillor Rivera. Yes. Councillor Merworth. Yes. Councillor Minibia Real. Yes. Councillor Cassett. Yes. Councillor Chavez. Yes. Councillor Lee Garcia. Yes. Councillor Michael Garcia. Yes. Mayor Weber. Yes. Motion has been approved to amend. Thank you. In that case, Madam Clerk, if you can take us to item 20 appointments, we'll go through A, B, and C. Uh, yes, item 20 is appointments to the Mayor's Youth Advisory Board. We are appointing uh, Asinath Otreas for an appointment term ending in uh, December of 2024, Casina Serna with an appointment term ending in 12, uh, December of 2023, Lisa Welcher 
with an appointment term ending in December of 2024, uh, Linnea Farrell with an appointment term ending in December of 2024, and Maya Patel with an appointment term expiring in December of 2023. Your motion? Move to approve. Second. There's, I, who was the second from? Lindell. Councillor Cassett? Lindell. Councillor Lindell. Okay. Uh, there's a motion, there's a second. Is there a discussion of these appointments to MIAB? Councillor Cass, uh, Chavez. I just wanted to speak a little bit to the individuals here. Um, I sat in some of the interviews for this. Um, and the these youth members are incredibly impressive. Um, they were very professional and their investment and interest in doing what they can to make Santa Fe better than what it is was really inspiring. So I just wanted to speak to them. I was blown away um, with how prepared they came with the goals they had for this city. Um, I'm very excited for my app for 2023. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Madam Clerk, can you call the roll on the MIAB appointments? Councilor Rivera? Yes. Councilor Merworth? Yes. Councilman Villarreal? Yes. Councilor Cassett? Yes. Councilor Chavez? Yes. Councilor Lee Garcia? Yes. Councilor Michael Garcia? Yes. Councilor Lindell? Yes. Mayor Weber? Yes. Motion has been approved. Thank you. And the next item is 20B. Uh, yes, the next item is appointments to the Santa Fe Library Board. We have Adele of Oliveria uh, with appointment term ending in July of 2025, and Jeanette um, Gilchrist with an appointment term ending in July of 2024. There a motion? Move to approve. Second. Second, this time goes to Councillor Cassett in a draw. Uh, is there a discussion of the uh, appointees to the library board? Madam Clerk, would you call the roll, please? Uh, yes. Councilor Merworth? Yes. Councilwoman Villarreal? Yes. Councilor Cassett? Yes. Councilor Chavez? Yes. Councilor Lee Garcia? Yes. Councilor Michael Garcia? Yes. Councilor Lindell? Yes. Councilor Rivera? Yes. Mayor Weber? Yes. Uh, library appointments have been approved. Thank you. And I think there's a final 20C on your list. Madam Clerk. That is correct. Item C is for the audit committee uh, with a request to appoint Stephanie uh, Woodruff a term ending in January of 2025. There a motion? Move to approve. There a second? Second. Discussion? Councilor Garcia. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I don't see that Judge V. Hill is still in the audience. Is she? No, I think she took off. She got some cookies and left. Mr. Mayor, Councilor, I, I don't think she was feeling well. And so she let our deputy state manager know she was going to go home. Okay. Um, given that she is the individual responsible for this nomination, I didn't know if there is anybody else that could answer questions on behalf of this appointment. Um, do we have, or would is there any staff identified that can help answer any questions? Uh, did uh, Emily leave? I don't know. I mean, the other place that this shows up is in our finance department. Mr. Mayor, I, uh, I did let Director Oster know she could go home early. I apologize for that. I'm happy to try to see if we can get her on Zoom. Um, well, I mean, given the, the questions are best fitted for Judge V. Hill, given it's uh, she, she's the one making the appointment. I, I do have some questions that I would like some clarification on her behalf on. Um, so with that, I'll go ahead and defer. I, I, did, I would uh, make a motion to postpone this approval uh, till our next meeting so we can have Judge V. Hill come back. There a second? Second. Okay, there's a motion to postpone till the next meeting and uh, bring Judge V. Hill back to answer Councilor Garcia's questions. Discussion? Uh, I'd be interested to know what the questions are. Sure. I mean, um, this is an individual who served with this committee previously, so I was wanting clarification regarding terms of service, um, regarding frequency of meetings being met, and, and other questions that uh, I think that uh, Judge V. Hill can provide some clarification on. I want, uh, does anybody on our team over there know if there are limitations on 
term appointment to the uh, audit committee? Are you, I don't know if there's a way to look it up very quickly. My uh, Councilor Garcia, do you, did you already do the research? Yeah. There, there, so there's four term limitation. It's just regarding. So for example, this is proposing uh, beginning January 1, 2025. Whereas if she served previously, I, I, I don't know. I know she left her service earlier this year. Um, and, uh, was that in the middle of a term? Did she, her term finish? Seeking clarification around that. Um, but I do believe some of the questions are best suited for Judge V. Hill, given that she is the one who reviewed and, and is making the appointments. Yeah, it is. You're cor absolutely correct. It is her choice. Um, my recollection is that the she left after her term expired. That's I can't I don't have the documentation in front of me, but uh, we can certainly defer and get the, the judge to uh, respond when we reconvene in January. Any other discussion? Mr. Mayor. Yes, Councilwoman. Yeah, I think I was more um, wanting information about um, applications and if it was um, notified that we had a vacancy. I don't recall that being um, advertised and we usually do that for most of our committees. And I think you know, personally, from a personal point of view, I think it would serve us better if we get fresh eyes and perspectives on um, the audit committee and the membership. And I think it's a very important committee. Um, and it's also just because the fact that, you know, our audits, people are slowly gaining public confidence to get our audit process in in control. I think it would be important to make sure we get a kind of a clean slate for folks that serve on the audit committee. Thank you. Any other comments about the motion to postpone? Madam Clerk, you want to call the roll? Uh, count, uh, uh, I, yeah, I just, I can cut that both ways. I think, you know, we do need fresh eyes um, to a certain degree, but we also need people who are kind of familiar with what it is we're dealing with and um, some knowledge of, where where we've been and how we're cre cre correcting the problems we have. So I think we need a blend. Um, but, you know, I, I think if Councillor Garcia has questions, we should get those answered. And it doesn't sound like we can get them answered tonight through other folks other than the judge. I think the city clerk's hand is up or the city attorney. Are you two? Yeah, right, Councilors, just on the technical question, there may be other questions that are appropriate for the judge, but just on the, the limitation of terms, um, it's in 6-5 and under the membership 6-5.3B, um, and that speaks to either two-year terms or three-year terms. Um, and then there's a limit of four terms of those terms. So, and I think she was in a term of three years, um, so this initial terms could have been two or three. Then after that initial committee was appointed, then there are three-year terms, staggering, and no more than four or three-year terms. So for a total of 12 years of service, um, that's just on the technical side of things. All right. Thank you. Uh, I, uh, to Councilor Mayor Worth's point, I did ch uh, talk with the judge about her choice, and she very much said what uh, Councilor Mayor Worth said to me, which is there's, a, there's some new people. There's some folks who are still becoming more acquainted with our both internal and other audit processes and that an, uh, an experienced uh, person would be uh, welcome as well. But Councilor Garcia, we can certainly get uh, the judge when, uh, when she's well, and I don't think she was at her best uh, health tonight. Uh, we can take this up in January. So with that, Madam Clerk, do you want to call the roll? Councilwoman Vareal. Can you clarify which motion? We're, we're uh, voting on the motion to postpone yes. this appointment until the next meeting. Yes, thank you. Perfect. Uh, Councilor Cassett? Yes. Councilor Chavez? Yes. Councilor Lee Garcia? Yes. Councilor Michael Garcia? Yes. Councilor Lindell? Councilor Rivera? Councilor Mayor Worth? Yes. Mayor Weber? Yes. Motion has been approved to postpone. Okay, we'll we'll make sure the judge is notified. And if you wanted to let her know ahead of time what she needs to prep for, I think that'd be really helpful because some of this is buried in the mists of 
of the past. Uh, some of it's, a, you know, a judgment issue about experience versus new eyes. But if the question is, how did she arrive at that choice and so on, I think giving her a chance to know what you'll be asking her be really welcome. Uh, Madam Clerk, we're now going to go back to 19A. That is correct. Mayor, the first item is 19A. It's consideration of a resolution. It's case number 2022-5767. It's the Midtown Adjacent Parcel General Plan Amendment. The City of Santa Fe agent requests that the governing body approve a resolution to amend the existing general plan future land use classification for the City of Santa Fe and New Mexico state-owned parcels comprising of plus or minus 24 acres adjacent to 1600 St. Michael's Drive from the public institutional to transitional mixed use. Great. Mr. Mayor, just a quick point of order, and I, I wasn't here at the last meeting because of my surgery, but I understand you had the public hearing, and this is just action, but it is noticed under public hearings. Yes. It was continued as it was continued as a public hearing because we didn't complete the work on it as it had been noticed as a public hearing previously. But uh, under our rules of process, once the public hearing part is closed, we can always. Uh, the city attorney has said we can vote to reopen it and welcome more testimony or questions. Why was it noticed under public hearings then and not something else or a combination of? maybe public hearings in action. Mayor over counselor, any any land use cases um, fall under this section under our procedural rules? This is just where they're required to be listed. Um, but they could be at any point of the process at the point that they're continued. Um, so there was a vote to, to continue the hearing until this date. Um, and it's possible you could reopen it. Um, uh, and just to the general public, it gives the appearance that there is going to be a public hearing on this. I don't know if they participated two weeks ago or not. So just just wanted to get that point of order. It, I think we were at the point of doing a motion and to vote and then it, it was recognized the resolution itself was not in the packet, um, right. which is what caused us to delay to this meeting. But I hear you. Well, we we certainly could reopen the, the hearing counselor. I'm, that is a if you if, go back through our processes for these things. If somebody want if you were not, I know you had to be excused that night. If there's something you'd like to move to reopen, we can certainly do that. No, I trust you did the work. Just wanted to clarify the the heading. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think the under where we left it. <laughs> And we left this in our last episode. Uh, we had a cliffhanger. We had the hearing, and now we were ready to entertain a motion and then to Councillor Garcia's point, discussion of the motion. So what I'd entertain is a motion for item 19A. Move to approve. Second. So there's a motion to approve this item, and there's a second, and now there is ample opportunity for further discussion. We have staff uh, here, not... Everybody, I don't believe Daniel Hernandez is present. He might be Zoomable, but we've got land use people, Midtown people. Um, Mr. Brown, I think, is here. Uh, so if there's questions, I'll just take it. I'll look for, for a hand to be raised. Oh, what? I, remember, I think the questions preceded motion. So if there were questions for staff, you would want to reopen the, the hearing. hearing. Right. Okay. So questions of staff is not appropriate, but comment and discussion among ourselves is. Correct. And if there's any technical questions, hopefully I'd be able to answer them in terms of process or or legal. So this is our opportunity for discussion and deliberation of the motion and of the item in front of us. Any Anyone looking to discuss the motion? Madam Clerk, could you call the roll? Councilor Cassett? Yes. Councilor Chavez? Yes. Councilor Lee Garcia? Yes. Councilor Michael Garcia? Yes. Councilor Lindell? Yes. Councilor Rivera? Yes. Councilor Mayor Worth? Yes. Councilwoman Villarreal? Yes. Mayor Weber? Yes. Motion has been approved. Thank you. And that then brings to the second part of the completion of the Midtown uh, hearings from two weeks ago, which is item 19B. 
That is correct. Item 19B is consideration of bill number 2022-26 and adoption of an ordinance. This is case number 2022-5769, Midtown adjacent parcels rezoning. The City of Santa Fe agent requests that the governing body approve an ordinance to rezone the City of Santa Fe and New Mexico State owned parcels comprising of plus or minus 24 acres adjacent to 1600 St. Michael's Drive from R5 which is five residential dwelling units per acre to C2 general commercial. The parcels are within the Midtown Link Overlay District. Move to approve. Second. There's a motion and a second to approve this item. Is there discussion among ourselves of that motion? Madam Clerk, could you call the roll? Oh, yes, Councilor Chavez? Yes. Councilor Lee Garcia? Yes. Councilor Michael Garcia? Yes. Councilor Lindell? Yes. Councilor Rivera? Yes. Councilor Merworth? Yes. Councilman Virail? Yes. Councilor Cassett? Yes. Mayor Weber? Yes. Motion has been approved. Thank you. Mayor? Yes, Councilor. Uh, I would move that we take a break until seven o'clock. There a second? Second. second. Okay, we have a motion to, uh, for the per members of the public who are awaiting the hearings, Two quick items. Number one, some people had been asking about a noise ordinance muffler issue that was uh, originally going to be on this agenda. It was not on this agenda. It didn't make the correct amount of time to notice it appropriately. So if you're here or watching, listening, waiting to zoom in on that, it, it will not be on tonight's agenda. It will be on the next uh, agenda in the in the coming year. Apologies to you if you miss, uh, got bad information on that. Uh, for those of you who are here awaiting the land use case, uh, or you want to uh, participate in petitions from the floor, we usually we try to hit petitions from the floor as close to 7 p.m. as possible. We know people can't always uh, get away from work or other responsibilities until 7, so our processes, our council procedures say we'll try to get 7 p.m. as the petitions from the floor. As soon as that item is done, we'll then proceed to the remaining item on the agenda, which is the uh, rezoning case. So there's a motion to uh, uh, step aside, adjourn until 7 p.m., uh, at which time we'll resume. Madam Clerk, do you want to call the roll? Yes, just to confirm, Councillor Casa, I have you with the second. Perfect. Uh, Councillor Michael Garcia? Yes. Councillor Lindell? Yes. Councillor Rivera? Yes. Councillor Merworth? Yes. Councilwoman Virial? Yes. Councillor Cassett? Yes. Councillor Chavez? Yes. Councillor Lee Garcia? Yes. Mayor Weber? Yes. Motion has been approved. All right, we'll Before, right, if I can get there. The problem is, it's such a small place and they pack it in.
Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody, <laughs> <laughs> Right. Okay. We're, we're going out of town after this, and then I can move it along. Yeah. Now. And I just tell you what's the microphone. Yeah. We'll see as you come up. Here, did I hear you were better in bar? Perfect. Thank, Thank you very much. All right. What's your name? What is your name? Mike. Mike. Carl. That's it. And uh, what's the name in the back? Oh, Alex. Alex. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go. How are you? Madam Clerk? Madam Clerk, are we back? We're streaming again. We're good to go. Very good. It's 7.04. We're back in session. Thank you, everybody, for your patience. I understand... Not everybody is familiar with the seven o'clock effort we make to have that be the time when we move to petitions from the floor so folks can have some sense of predictability and dependability when we go through to public uh, comment, not regarding the uh, item that's a public hearing, but anything else. So Madam Clerk, I don't see anything on the screen. I don't know if we have people in the Zoom room. Um, let me first invite, uh, Anybody who's here who has a petition from the floor that is not related to the public hearing that we'll get to next, 
if you want to speak to something other than that hearing, uh, the petition from the floor is the time to do that. And you could come up to the uh, microphone and address something other than the public hearing. Is there anybody who wants to speak to something not related to the public hearing, but a petition from the floor? Good. And uh, Madam Clerk, if we could get the um, Zoom up so we can see if there's anybody in the Zoom room, that'd be great too. So please uh, give us your name and tell us you have two minutes to speak to whatever you want that's not related to the public hearing. Okay. Uh, uh, hello, councilors and governing body. I'm Pam Slipian, one of the artists at the Plaza Artisan Program that wrote to you about our problem with the application jury selection process for the next five years. Thank you to those that responded yesterday. Our issue is time sensitive, as the city has informed us that our licenses will expire on December 31st, 17 days from now. And we will not be able to return earliest March 1st, and the jury process is complete, hopefully by then, but we don't know. According to our ordinance, Section K, it specifically defines how to administer the licenses in such a delayed situation as this, and that is to extend them for six months and twice if need be. This allows ample time for the jury selection problems at hand to be resolved and the selection process can be completed with new license holders for the next five years for the artists to continue to sell. The two month or more closure the city proposes creates great financial and life hardship on those of us that continue to sell our artwork in these cold winter days. Because the ordinance defines strategy for the situation to extend the licenses, I ask you to help us have the city staff working on this use section K. There is nowhere in the ordinance for the procedure they have chosen. Please, please, I'm respectfully asking that the city extend our licenses until the selection process is complete. Thank you for your time and always for what you do for our community. Thank you. Hi, uh, Councilman, uh, Mayor. My name is Patricia Wyatt. I live in District 1 on San Salvador Lane. Uh, I'm an artist on the, in the Santa Fe Artisans Program, and I've been in this program for maybe 23 years. I've uh, participated in probably four jurying processes and have never really experienced what's happening at the moment. Uh, our jurying process has been delayed many, many times. Uh, we've been told that they have been unable to find a jury um, and that uh, because they haven't really been able to come up with a jury, uh, we have been asked to no longer sell after December 31st. Uh, we could sell again if the jury process is completed and if uh, licenses are awarded in March. Uh, I generally sell for the entire year including January, February, March, and uh, the amount of time that we're required by our ordinance, which is from October, from March through October. And I have a full-time license, so I need to be there by the ordinance 15 days of every month. So I'm there at least 15 days. Um, I'm concerned uh, about the jurying process and when it will be complete. That means not only that the jurying, jurors are seated, but that the jury is completed, that uh, licenses are awarded, that if people have uh, complaints or uh, issues with it, that that has to then be dealt with. And I'm not sure at what point we will be able to sell again. This is a tremendous hardship for me. This is what I do. This is my livelihood. I'm a painter. Um, I do mixed media paintings, and this is how I support myself. We were told by email that we weren't going to be able to come out again until at least March. I'm asking that you, according to the ordinance, extend our licenses um, until 
the jury process is complete. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Good evening, counselors and mayor. My name is Annette Gonzalez, and um, my mom, Martha Wright, is the last original artist from the Plaza Park program, um, which has been on the plaza for 47 years. Still out there, still goes to work every day, still makes a living, provides for three households on the plaza, which maintains all of us to work and be on the plaza. And um, we're asking for our licenses to be extended. The city manager has the administrative authority according to the licenses, according to our ordinance, up to six months, two times until this is resolved. And we are asking for some help because we are unable to go to our, our buying trip to buy all our stones to work the entire year. And without any kind of, of a definitive answer, we cannot proceed to go and know what we're going to happen for the entire year. Thank you very much for listening to us and have a very good evening. Thank you so much. Hello, my name is Claudia Chavez. I'm an artist in the Plaza program as well. I live in Santa Fe County. Therefore, I don't have a specific representative and I tend to reach out to everybody. So I thank you all for always being very prompt and helpful with me. As many of you know, we are facing the loss of our licenses due to the delay of the jury panel and process. We were told that we'd have an update on Friday and I hope it will be really good news. I'm here this evening because I didn't want to miss the opportunity to speak to you in person. I'm asking respectfully that the city extend our licenses as stated in section K of the Plaza Artisan Ordinance. I am hoping to work New Year's Day. It's a three day um, weekend or holiday. It's on a Sunday, it's usually very busy. I also plan on working the three day holiday weekends for Martin Luther King and President's Day. Those are big tourism days as well. Even though it's winter and cold, we still go out. Um, any other favorable winter days are needed as this is my livelihood. I am very, very grateful for the Plaza Artisan Program. I've been a participant for 15 years. I'm grateful for the opportunity to sell my art in my hometown and to share my culture. And I thank you all so much for everything you do for our community. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. You too. Uh, Madam Clerk, is there anyone in the Zoom room who wants to take advantage of petitions from the floor before we go to the public hearing? Uh, yes, Mayor, Ms. Stephanie Beninato. Um, you has her hand up in the on Zoom. There you go, Stephanie. Uh, Stephanie Beninato, District Two. I want to say that I agreed with uh, Councillor Rivera's um, initial comment about public hearings. Um, those two Midtown Campus things. I know that you did have hearings on them uh, last meeting or whenever that was, but you didn't really start them to eleven. Um, and it would have been nice to reopen it for people who couldn't stay up past 11 because they have actual jobs that they have to get up early for. Um, and I also think that it would have been good because I don't think everyone understands the process that you all were following. Um, that also brings me to uh, say that the city land use uh, assistant director and a city attorney has now decided um, that quasi-judicial uh, recommendations from the H board do require public hearings. But I really wonder why it took a month to arrive at that if the policy is for transparency and it is very, very clear from administrative law that quasi-judicial hearings need um, public hearings. So I'm just bringing that up again to, to, to your attention. I also wonder why city staff, including city attorneys, are having trouble to understand that when you have a quorum of four or five people, the majority is three, not two. We've had at least two improper votes because of this mathematical um, problem. And, um, and I think the, the last thing I would like to bring to your attention or question is we have a new management and recreation in the pools in particular. And one a person is uh, supposedly manager of Salvador Perez in Fort Marcy. And, but there's no one at Fort Marcy uh, pool staff that is right now. 
question is when will the pool open, of course. Um, but more importantly, why is he spending his time at Fort Marcy where there's no staff when he's supposed to be managing the staff over at PEDES? And um, I don't know if there's so much paperwork there that he has to go there, but it's Thank like you. a management uh, decision. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Uh, is there anyone else in the Zoom room who wants to take advantage of petitions from the floor? Madam Clerk, no. One more time, I know most of you are here for the public hearing, but this if you did have anything you wanted to address that was not related to that public hearing, this is the time to do that. Uh, on, a, on a couple of other notes, um, for those who are standing in the back, there are some chairs up front if you'd like to have a place to sit. Um, and if there's an empty chair next to you that somebody could sit in because it hasn't been filled, if you could just raise your hand so that folks who are not in who are in the back who don't think there's a chair for them could find a place to sit and be comfortable for the hearing that's going to begin. So if you do have a chair next to you that's not taken, please let folks know. Um, also, if you have a cell phone, if you could silence it or set it to stun or however you want to set it up, uh, that'd be a good thing uh, because people are going to be testifying and the council members are going to be listening hard and telephone ringing is not uh, really a conducive thing. Uh, also, um, as we run this hearing that's about to begin, I know there's a lot of folks here who really want to be heard and everybody will get a chance to be heard. Uh, please don't applaud, don't boo, don't get emotional outbursts. Uh, be respectful of everybody, be patient with everybody. Uh, everybody will get a chance to speak and we'll all uh, have a chance to listen to each other. But I do ask for decorum, respect, uh, and, and uh, keeping everybody's uh, sense of propriety and, and, and respectfulness front and, front and centered throughout the hearing. Uh, Mr. Blair, city manager. Mr. Mayor, just so you all are aware, we've also turned down the actual temperature so it doesn't have to be so warm in here. So hopefully it will cool off here in a little bit. Uh, yeah, Councillor Cassett. Uh, just real fast, I, I'm getting um, some information that our YouTube stream may not be working. Now it is from my mother, no offense, mom, that might not be the best source. So she can't see me anyway because she's having a hard time with YouTube. But um, can we make sure that the yeah. YouTube is working? Yeah. Mr. Mayor, Councilor, we'll reach out to IT right now and see if they can check it for us. Thank Make you. Sure it's, and there still are seats up front if anybody wants to take a comfortable chair. Um, before we get to the presentations, a couple of other uh, items. I want to walk through our governing body process for this hearing so there's no doubt about how we're going to conduct the hearing on anybody's part. Uh, and then I want to make sure the city attorney has a chance to remind everybody, including the members of the governing body, what a quasi-judicial hearing is and what the item in front of us is as a matter of land use law. So very, very briefly, this is the process. We use it in all of these hearings. We st I start by asking the members of the governing body if anyone has had ex parte communications that might lead them to be uh, unable to render a fair and impartial decision. And if they have, this is would be the time to recuse themselves from that hearing. Uh, we'll start with the staff report. And Mr. Escobel is getting set up now, uh, followed by the applicant who will uh, provide a, uh, their statement and sworn testimony, the applicant and agent. Uh, after the applicant is done, we go to sworn public comment. Everybody who's here and on Zoom who want to testify will be sworn and will be accorded two minutes. And if there is an order in which folks wish to line up so that there's a, a stream of uh, logic, that's perfectly permitted. Uh, after all of the public comment is done, then the governing body members will be uh, open to question anyone, whether it's a member of the public or staff or the applicant. So after you've made your statement as a member of the public, 
you may want to stick around because you may actually be called back to the podium by a member of the governing body who would like to ask you some more specific questions. Uh, it happens. And it's an opportunity to get more input from something that somebody on the governing body has heard and they'd like to dig a little deeper. Uh, after that has been completed, and we'll go across the governing body and probably start with 10 minutes or so per person, uh, so I can guarantee about 90 minutes of interaction from the governing body, uh, and maybe another round if answers uh, questions persist and need to be asked. Some point we'll close that public hearing, at which point we will then entertain a motion and a second, and then it becomes debated. And that's where we go from asking questions to offering ways to think about this case, uh, ways to frame the choice that's in front of the governing body. Finally, at the end, there's a vote, and we'll take a roll call vote when all the discussion has been uh, had by members of the governing body. So that's the, the process. Um, Madam City Attorney, you've been helpful in all of our land use hearings, and we've got a full house tonight just to be clear what the quasi-judicial nature of a hearing is, how it changes the governing body's posture, uh, and also the specifics, the, the what is and is not in front of us, because there was at least one erroneous news report about what we will be voting on tonight. Yes, Mr. Mayor, thank you, members of the governing body, members of the public. Uh, we are hearing a rezoning tonight. Um, my understanding, and I just was shown this article, that there was a misprint or misreporting that there was also a subdivision going on this evening. That is not the case. The subdivision um, occurred at the Planning um, Commission, and my understanding is the appeal for the subdivision period has passed. However, it is contingent on the rezoning. Um, so tonight we are here for rezoning. Rezonings are quasi-judicial matters. That means we're applying um, the existing law of city code to the facts presented either during the hearing or in the record that is included in the packets, um, the written record and the written submissions by the public. Um, so that includes all testimony today, presentations by the applicant, the presentation by staff, um, the, the conversations at the planning commission that led to this hearing, um, and the answers to any questions that the governing body may ask tonight too, which may be of staff, the applicant, or the public. Um, to re to reemphasize what the mayor said, uh, the, the governing body does sometimes ask questions of the public. So if you're willing to answer questions, certainly be available to answer that type of question. Um, so in, unlike in most of the proceedings that we have had tonight and on and in many other cases, um, the governing body is not sitting in its policy making role, which is when they get to determine what the law should be or what con the conduct of the city should be but rather they're looking at what the established law is and seeing how it applies to this particular situation. Mr. Mayor, I would just add that the step that happens after a vote is that we bring a findings of fact and conclusion of law back to the governing body at a future meeting. Um, and those findings of fact and conclusions of law describe the basis for the governing body's decision, um, which come from evidence presented during the hearing. Thank you. Uh, so let me begin the process I briefly uh, outlined, which is to ask the governing body if anyone has had ex parte communications to the extent or to the uh, volume that they are unable to render a fair and impartial uh, vote tonight. And if everyone is good on that, and I think it's a clear head shake, uh, Mr. Escobel, we will turn it over to you for the staff report, and if you're ready, uh, you may be having some technical difficulties. Uh, Mayor Weber, if I may, I would like to read the caption um, yeah, to the record good. first. Go for it. Perfect. Um, we have, we are hearing item 19C. It's consideration of a bill number 2022-22. It's adoption of an ordinance. This is case number 2022-5063. 2200 Old Pecos Trail Rezoning, case number 2022-5063, Montoya Land Use Consulting Incorporated, agent for Pierre um, Emistoy Acres, is our applicant requests approval of a bill to rezone approximately 9.59 acres located at 2200 Old Pecos Trail within the South Central Highway Corridor Overlay District 
and the Suburban Archaeological Review Overlay District from R1, residential one dwelling unit per acre, to R3, residential three dwellings per acre. Uh, and as you mentioned, Mr. Dan Escabel, our case manager, will be presenting at this time. And uh, just a quick reminder, Madam Clerk, you will be swearing people in. Uh, there's a card that describes what people are being asked to swear to. Uh, it, everybody will do it and uh, raise their right hand and take this oath when the time comes. So if the technology permits, Mr. Escabel, if you can proceed and if you can get through the report in about 20 minutes, that'll be great. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor, members of the governing body, what we'll do is we're going to start uh, with the road of review that this application went through. Can everybody hear me with this mask on? Suboptimal. Better. I just hope I don't get sick for the holidays. We hope not to. So the application has two prerequisites. And this is the first. The applicant is required to attend a pre-application meeting, which is regulated by 1431E. The applicant attended this meeting on July 7th, 2021. The pre-application meeting is typically attended by several members of the city development review team. This meeting allows the city to determine the type of application the application the applicant needs to submit and the process it must follow. The applicant can also ask questions of the attending DRT members to help them prepare the application. The applicant is required to attend an early neighborhood notification meeting as part of the second prerequisite, as regulated by 1431F. The applicant held their first ENN meeting on December 9th, 2021. However, the planning manager at the time, Noah Burke, required a second ENN meeting due to high attendance and concerns raised at the first meeting. The second meeting was held on February 10th, 2021. Unfortunately, the applicant experienced some technical issues with the Zoom capacity and had to hold a third ENN on March 8th, 2022. The third ENN did meet and comply with the requirements of 1431F. The, applicant was, the application was submitted on March 21st, 2021. The application was processed into the system and then handed off to the case manager. The case manager then presents and distributes the project to the appropriate development review team, the DRT, which is made up of various professionals and engineers from different city departments and divisions. The case manager leads the team for this project, which had 15 members. The public schools are also part of the team, but they do not provide review on city code requirements. After the case manager, manager distributes the project to the DRT, the team will review the material and contact the applicant if they need additional information for clarification or to complete the application. This step is crucial in the review process because it helps address any deficiencies and ensures compliance with city code. This may involve requesting additional submittals, plan amendments, and may result in conditions of approval in front of the public body. After the applicant responds to the DRT request for information, they can proceed to the next step in the process, which is to provide notice as regulated by 1431H. If the applicant fails to comply with this notice requirements, he's automatically postponed until the next meeting until he meets the notice requirements again. Once the DRT completes their reviews, they will forward all comments and conditions to the case manager. The case manager will compile this information into a report analyze it, and make a recommendation based on their overall analysis. From this point, the case manager presents the working document with DRT analysis and recommendations to the land use director, assistant land use director, planning manager, and legal for review and approval. These individuals make up the final members of the team, which I'm honored to be a part of. They are some of the finest men and women I have had the pleasure of working with. Once approved, the report is packaged with the material associated with the application and report and presented to the public body, charged in reviewing the application, making a recommendation. The 
The project that went before the Planning Commission consisted of two cases, 2022-5063, rezoning from R1 to R3, in case 2022-5604, preliminary plat approval for a 25-lot subdivision. The project was presented to the Planning Commission on July 21st, 2022, which continued on August 18th, 2022. The project was presented as a unified project, but each case was acted on separately. For the rezoning case, the Planning Commission was provided the analysis to identify that the applicant addressed the rezoning approval criteria pursuant to 1435C. And I'll go over these one by one. For criteria one, there are three options. There was a mistake in the original zoning. There was not. There has been a change in the surrounding area, altering the character of the neighborhood to such an extent as to justify changing the zoning. The only issue here is that there is a conflict between the general plan future land use map and the existing zoning. Number three, a different use category is more advantageous to the community as articulated in the general plan or other adopted city plans. This had a lot of discussion at the planning commission. And the, what it is is that the area in question was annexed into the city in the early 1960s, with the default zoning of R1, which is one dwelling unit per acre. However, the governing body's 1999 general plan policy specifically designated this area for low density. This is three to seven dwelling units per acre. While the area to the west, which is now solely Lomas, was designated for very low density, one to three dwelling units per acre. And it's typical for higher densities along major roadways to help transition from the lower densities from rural uh, or more rural character of an area to a higher density. This higher density also contributes to a larger housing pool for the city. So what we're dealing with here is a nine lot subdivision in R1 zone district would not be required to contribute affordable housing, but rather a fee in lieu of. A 25 lot subdivision in an R3 zone district requires five affordable lots. And the next S here, or the, the Delta is 16, 16 lots with five affordable houses, five affordable lots. And that's the discussion. You have nine lots or 25 lots, the Delta being 16 lots, including five affordable housing. In the criterion two, all the rezoning requirements of chapter 14 have been met. And for this, we look towards the entire global application and the applicant did address all of the criteria for this criterion and is compliant with 1435CB. Move to criterion three, the rezoning is consistent with the applicable policies of the general plan, including the future land use map. And as I said before, this aligns with the proposed density of R3 with the city's general plan and future land use policies for low density for three to seven dwelling units per acre adopted in 1999. Moving on to criterion four, the amount of land proposed for rezoning and proposed use for the land is consistent with the city policies regarding the provisions of urban land sufficient to meet the amount, rate, and geographical location of the growth of the city. The amount of land is greater than two acres. The requested change corrects a mismatch between the future land use map established in 1999 by the governing body and the zoning attached at the time of annexation in 1961. So we believe that criterion four is also addressed. Criterion five, the existing and proposed infrastructure, such as the street system, sewer and water lines, and public facilities such as fire stations and parks will be able to accommodate the impacts of the proposed development. Well, again, the project did get reviewed by our development review team, which is made up of numerous engineers and professionals alike. The DRT analysis identified that the city infrastructure can accommodate the impacts of the proposed development. In regards to the traffic review, it is important to note that no engineering documentation was provided that challenged the applicant's traffic analysis. The traffic concerns submitted were forwarded to the city traffic consultants 
Under NMSA Chapter 61, Article 23, Engineering and Surveying Practice Act, only an engineer can review the work of another engineer. Similarly, we use engineers licensed in the state of New Mexico to assist with utility design, terrain management, road design, and traffic mitigation, and to review a traffic impact analysis submitted by an engineer. The findings of the city engineer were presented to the Planning Commission for consideration. Criterion six, unless the proposed change is consistent with applicable general plan policies, the Planning Commission and the governing body shall not recommend approval any, any rezoning the practical effect is, is two, and we'll go to A, allow uses or changing character significantly different from the inconsistent, significantly different from or inconsistent with the prevailing use and character in the area. This particular subject also carried a lot of discussion at the Planning Commission. And for this, the inconsistency lies in the differences between the 1999 general plan policy requiring low density, three to seven dwelling units per acre, and the existing R1 zoning established at the time of annexation. The change from R1 to R3 aligns with the plan policy adopted by the governing body, making it consistent with the area's planning. Furthermore, there is a consistency between very low density and low density as the density range for very low density is one to three dwelling units per acre. And the range for low density is three to seven dwelling units per acre. The overlap at three dwelling units per acre links the two residential patterns as a compatible density pattern between the very low density and the low density policies. As you can see, there is an overlap between the, the two distinct policies. E, affect an area less than two acres unless adjusting the boundaries between districts. Well, this is a nine acre lot, so it did not have to adjust the boundaries between two districts, but the district to the north is R2, which carries a PUD, as well as the district to the northeast, which is R2. Benefit one or few landowners at the expense of the surrounding landowners or general public. The change in zoning is not the at the expense of the surrounding landowners or general public, but a, a corrective change in density that corrects the zoning in line with the city policy for the benefit of the city by adding to the city community housing pool. So again, we believe that the applicant has addressed all of the rezoning criteria. The property lies within two overlay districts, the suburban archeological district and the South Central Highway Corridor. For the archaeological district, the city approved archaeological clearance on December 2nd, 2021. For the South Central Highway Corridor, the property is entirely within the South Central Highway Corridor. There are many rules and regulations attributed to the South Central Highway Corridor. The first is density. The corridor allows a density of R21. However, the applicant is seeking R3 in line with the general plan, so he complies with that section. The maximum height of the corridor is 25 feet to the roof deck. The applicant has limited their structures, their buildings to 18 feet, which goes above and beyond the criteria for this section. A 25 foot building would be a two story building. The building setback is 75 feet. Uh, it should be noted that the minimum building setback for the South Central Highway Corridor is 50 feet except for the segment of Old Santa Fe Trail where the building setback is 75 feet. And again, the applicant has gone above this section because as you can see, it's a building setback, which affects only the houses, the garages, the sheds alike, carports. But when you add structure to the mix, you're also including walls and fences. Now there are many walls and fences along the corridor. Uh, this will not happen on the subdivision that was approved as part of the Planning Commission because they've restricted that to two structures. Again, they've exceeded that standard. No disturbance of the existing landscaping within 25 feet of the right-of-way. Well, there is one disturbance, which is the driveway, which, is, which accesses off of Old Peckles Trail into the subdivision. 
Aside from that, the applicant will be adding additional landscaping within the 25 and 75 foot area, uh, which will add to the greenery along that corridor, again, going above and beyond that standard. Arroyos and flood, floodplains must be set back 10 feet. The applicant is complying with that section. The applicant is also required to, on top of the 25 foot and 75 foot setback, add 50% open space per lot. The applicant must comply with that and is complying with that and will be providing that designation on the plat at the time of final plat should this application be approved. Excuse us, this is not a time for Q&A and no audience participation. This is a presentation. And there is no outdoor storage. The applicant is complying with that. So again, the applicant has met all of the standards for the South Central Highway Corridor as well. So now we get to the city's analysis on the, and it's a brief one for the subdivision and the city's analysis presented to the Planning Commission identified compliance with chapter 1437C, approval criteria for subdivisions. The Planning Commission reviewed as part of that project, city overlay districts, city utility and water sewer, water budget and water rights, environmental services, development and design standards, which includes your terrain management, your flood zone, your landscaping, Santa Fe Homes program, and infrastructure and internal street and access. The final is our engineers did review the traffic impact analysis presented by the app, which I explained earlier. So on August 18th, 2022, the the decision of the Planning Commission found a case 2022-5063 in compliance with Chapter 1435C approval criteria for rezoning and recommended the governing body approve case 2022-5063. That is the case before the governing body tonight and is on the agenda for review and approval. On that same night, August 18, uh, 2022, the decision of the Planning Commission found the case 2022-5604 in compliance with Chapter 1437C, approval criteria for subdivisions and pursuant to 1437B3D, Planning Commission's review and decision-making authority granted onto them by the governing body, they approved case 2022-5604, the preliminary plat approval for the 25 residential subdivision, including the five affordable housing. That is not on the agenda for today. Like to add that there were no appeals on the preliminary plat. That window has closed per 14317. This brings us to the last part. The Planning Commission's recommended the governing body approve case 2022 5063 22 Old Peckles Trail rezoning. There is one motion required for this case. Move to approve case 2022-5063-22 Old Pecos Trail rezoning, adopting bill 2022-22, or move to deny case 2022-5063-2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning and direct staff to draft to propose findings of fact and conclusions of law reflecting the governing body's decision. Mayor, members of the governing body, that will conclude my presentation for tonight. Thank you, Daniel. So, I appreciate it. I, I remind everybody, this is not a public conversation. You don't get to ask questions of the individual at the podium. The next item of business then is the applicant or the applicant's agent uh, will be sworn and provide a presentation. Uh, if you could also stay roughly around 20 minutes, that'd be great. We've got a lot of folks who want to be heard tonight. Um, you can come up and then this is a public service announcement for everybody. This will be here. You'll raise your right hand. I'll raise mine and then just take your uh, information. Okay. Good evening, Mayor and members of the City Council. If you would indulge just, just a moment while I set up my computer. Right.
I don't want to get sick for Christmas either. Okay, once again, good evening. Yeah, I think we have to do the swearing in oh, yes. part. Let's not forget oh, that. I, Monica Montoya, residing at 726 Gregory Lane, solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I have in reference to 200, 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth and do this under the penalties of perjury. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, Honorable Mayor, and members of the City Council. Good evening. My name is Monica Montoya. I am a land use consultant with the local firm Montoya Land Use Consulting. I personally have over 40 years of experience in the planning area, 25 of which were with your land use department. Um, I retired in 2005 and opened my own planning consultant firm. With me this evening is Carl Summer and Joseph Carnes of Summer and Carnes and Associates, Oralyn Guerrero Ortiz of Design Ingenuity, who is the civil on the project, and Michael Gomez, who is the traffic consultant on the project. We are all here in um, representing Pierre Amistoy, who is the developer on the project. Through the years, I have worked extensively with the cities, adopted development policies, the Santa Fe City Code, and the land use review process. This evening, we hope to show you that the rezoning application before you is well thought through, is respectful to the neighborhood, and conforms with your adopted policies and ordinances. Our presentation this evening will be focused on the rezoning request, as Dan mentioned, as that is what's before you this evening. But as staff mentioned, the Planning Commission approved the preliminary plat. With that understanding, um, in order to provide context, we would like to share with you the project design. It is our desire to convey what we feel were endless efforts to produce a product which fits well with the neighborhood, respects the intent of the corridor standards, and adheres to the general plan. And it responds meaningfully to neighborhood input. I'd like to give you a roadmap to our presentation this evening. Joseph Carnes will get right to the heart of the matter of this case, namely that this is a rezoning request that implements the planned zoning for this property. And then I'll jump back up and go over with you the specifics, well, the, the general specifics of the plan that the Planning Commission approved. And then I'll turn the floor over to Carl who will talk about some policy issues. And then we will briefly conclude for questions. Be okay, I was okay. I, re I was going to respectfully request another five minutes to rebut if there were any questions from the council. And with that, I will turn the floor over to Joseph. We need you to take the oath too, sir. I, Joseph Carnes, residing at 83 in Cantado Loop, solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth and do this under the penalties of perjury. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mayor Weber, members of the council. We're here this evening to ask you to take the final step and complete a land use planning process that started by the City Council of Santa Fe over six decades ago. Mr. Esquivel described in detail the mismatch that exists today between the R1 zoning and the three to seven dwelling unit per acre general plan land use designation. You know, when I started on this case about a year ago, that's the first thing I looked at. I said, wow, there's a mismatch here. Why is there a mismatch? Nobody likes a mismatch in planning situations, but it exists. And I'm going to elaborate a little bit on what, on what Dan talked about and expand on his discussion and focus on some criti three critical um, general plan and zoning ordinance regulations that directly address and provide guidance to the council in resolving that discrepancy. That mismatch was not a mistake. 
but rather was an intentional part of the city's land use designation regulations dating back to 1961. In 1961, this section, excuse me, in 1961, this section 1441E4 existed in the city code and it still exists today. It says in the event of annexation of new areas to Santa Fe, the area shall be zoned R1 until otherwise classified. Let's go back to 1961. At that time, the city council had the opportunity to annex a substantial area along the Old Pecos Trail to the city, which included the project site, Soli Lomas, and areas to the south and to the east. It was a major annexation to the city. I wasn't around at that time, but I'm aware that at that time, this area was not on the outskirts of the city, it was beyond the outskirts of the city. At that time, there was no basis for the city to carry out planning of this area, to decide what the land use should be more specifically than the R1 zone. And that's why it was in your code. You start with a base zone. It's effectively a holding zone that stands until, as the, as the section says, the property is otherwise classified. What it provided for was a planning process to occur at the appropriate time when the city had a better sense of what the appropriate land uses for the property in the area would be. Let's accelerate 40 years into the future. In the mid 1990s, there was a great effort a lot of people put time and effort and heart into the 1999 general plan, perhaps some of the folks in the room here tonight. That process took a number of years to complete. And as Mr. Esquivel described, the end result was that the city council at that time in its general plan land use map spoke directly to this property and other properties along the Old Pecos Trail as, Dan, as Mr. Esquivel showed you and took a step forward in the planning process. They, the city council in 1999 adopted a policy. They didn't rezone the property. That's not for the city to do on private property. That's a private property owner's obligation. But in based on the development patterns in existence at the time and the public process that took place in the mid 1990s, the city council adopted and provided guidance to all of us. Since 1999, we have all known, if we look at the general plan land use map, the city council's intent in adopting the 1999 general plan. They didn't want to see less density than three units lots per acre. They didn't want to see more than seven lots per acre. That, that was a fait accompli. That's what the council did, and it's guided us ever since. And I'm going to go beyond what Dan talked about and describe three regulations that provide guidance because the discrepancy between the R1 zoning and the three to seven unit per acre land use designation, that was intentional. It was built into the plan. It was inherent in what happened from the 1960s to the 1990s. The first one is the resolution that adopted the general plan update, whereas pursuant to the state law, guiding general plans, quote, the zoning regulations and restrictions of the city are to be in accordance with a comprehensive plan. The comprehensive plan is your general plan. This makes clear to you, this is the answer to the question of how to resolve the discrepancy. Either the zoning could guide the general plan or the general plan could guide the zoning. And this makes clear that it is the zoning that is to be in accordance with the comprehensive plan. That only makes sense because the R1 zoning adopted in 1991, or 1961, that was effectively a hold, holding zone. It was designed by the city to be changed at the time when the planning documents were in place. The general plan provided that guidance to the city and to the residents of Santa Fe. Likewise, in your zoning ordinance, section 14.1.3, states that the purposes of chapter 14 are to implement the purposes of the general plan. As you well know, your city code in chapter 14 is the law of the city. The zoning ordinance speaks directly to this question. It provides us all with guidance about what is supposed to happen to reconcile the zoning with the general plan. 
And again, it provides the answer to the density question. It is abundantly clear, you know, th these plans, both the zoning ordinance and the general plan were written in an effort to provide clear communication to anybody who would read it, to all of us. A fair reading of these two sections provides the answer to the question of which should control here, the general plan or the zoning ordinance. The general plan provides the policy that guides us and is baked into the planning process that, going back to the original section, the areas shall be zoned R1 until otherwise classified. Well, we're, ha we're here tonight to have it otherwise classified. Now, I want to point out only a couple years after the 1999 general plan was adopted, right across the street on the north side of West Zia Road, on the west side of Old Pecos Trail, the plazas at Old Pecos Trail subdivision was applied for. In that application, it's, it's on all fours with this one, the applicant came in and asked for a PUD rezoning so that the zoning would match the general plan. The city council considered that application, approved it, and today on that 19.1 acre site, there are 40 homes, including six affordable dwellings. That provides a precedent and shows you that in 2005, that council was faced with the same question that is before you tonight. So finally, going back to uh, Dan, Mr. Esquivel gave a, a description of the, I'm just gonna focus on the relevant section that we have emphasized in our application as far as the approval criteria for a rezoning, that one or more of the following questions, uh, conditions exist. Number three is, Mr. Esquivel explained, a different use category is more advantageous to the community as articulated in the general plan or other adopted city plans. As articulated in the general plan, it's right on your future land use map, three to seven dwelling units per acre. That's what we're applying for is R3 zoning. It is articulated in the general plan. That provides your answer. And that brings us full circle. This is not complicated. Your plans were written to be understood. The zoning is R1 because it's a holding zone dating back to 1961. Your general plan and zoning ordinance sections that I just quoted provide clear guidance that the zoning is to conform with the general plan, not vice versa. We're not here asking you to change any of your policies or regulations. As your city, count, as your city attorney explained, we are trying to, as Dan, Dan pointed out, we're trying to correct the mismatch between the zoning and the general plan land use designation. We're asking you to implement your general plan land use designation by changing the, zone, the existing holding zone R1 to R3 in the same manner as the city did in 2005 on the plaza project across the street. Well, as Mr. Escobar pointed out, the planning commission already approved the preliminary plat in August. Monica is now going to share how the subdivision goes above and beyond the code requirements and then Carl will finish up in talking about other important general plan policies that this project furthers. Thank you very much. Thank you. I would encourage you to be aware of the clock and use your time swiftly. Thank you, Mayor. So as staff and we've mentioned, the Planning Commission has granted preliminary plat approval for this. You already know that this is plan is provided to you for context because I wanted to show you what the Planning Commission did that evening. This is a layout of the subdivision on, um, on an image onto the existing site as it is today. And what I can say is that each one of these lots were uh, developed to keep in mind opportunities to place homes within trees. And so this layout shows that there is a, can let me see, can you see my, yes, there is an existing arroyo, a waterway that bisects the property in an east-west direction that uh, will be maintained as open space. There are two clusters to this subdivision. On the north cluster, there are seven lots with a road access, a, a full access drive off of West Sea Road. On the south cluster are 18 lots with the single access off of a 
um, Old Pecos Trail with the right in, right out, and a left turn in into the subdivision there. It, as um, staff and we have mentioned previously, there are five affordable lots on this in this subdivision. And these, these lots are intermixed with the market lots. They're not all just clustered in one particular spot. The highway corridor standards talks about a 75 foot setback. As you know, this line right here represents that 75 foot setback. From, that's from to the right of way line. In addition to that, there is, there's 40 some feet between the property line and the, um, the, the pavement of the old Pecos Trail. The corridor standards also impose a 50 foot, I'm sorry, a 50% open space standard for each one of these lots. So when folks come in for building permits, they'll be required to demonstrate that 50% of their lot is dedicated as open space. So there, we're not intending to do any mass grading on this, there, this site. There will be grading for purposes of installing the roads and utilities, but other than that, the, we don't expect a mass grading. There will be some trees that will have to be relocated as a result of the, um, the road on the north side. There are gonna, there's gonna be sidewalk along the West Sea Road and along the old Pecos Trail, as well as a bike lane for, um, for folks to use. We did a traffic study. Uh, we presented a traffic study to the Planning Commission uh, which was reviewed by staff and uh, agreed to by staff. The study basically found that there would be minimal impact um, and the, the ranges were within um, the city's requirements. This we prepared for you to give you a, a sense of what the subdivision might look like when it's built out. Please keep in mind that this, these are uh, boxes that are, are put on the site, not by any means what an actual building might look like, its height, but just to give you an idea of what it potentially could be, the, the promise of that. As you can see, there we've got lots of landscaping within that 75 foot setback. And um, since the planning commission meeting, this rendering doesn't show up, but we will be adding even more landscaping along that, that back area. Quite nice. Well, we, we hope you agree. And so as staff mentioned, there is, we did a pretty extensive neighborhood process. Um, we talked with our neighbors quite a bit at official, unofficial phone calls, personal meetings, over coffee, et cetera. And these are the main issues that we heard from the neighbors. Maintain that open space, that wildlife corridor, because animals use it, deer use it, coyotes, rabbits, and other wildlife use it. So we kept that as an open space. There was a, um, we, we kept, we increased our setback along the west boundary line from what code requires 15 foot to a 25 foot. And, it, and the code says requires 15 feet and in some cases five feet. We're going to pull our buildings back 25 feet from that west boundary line. The Santa Fe, as Dan mentioned, the Santa Fe City Code does not restrict two stories on our tract or, or in any residential district in the city of Santa Fe. The Highway Corridor permits 25 foot. But what we heard from our neighbors is a request to reduce that height. So we committed to a single story construction on, in the entire subdivision. We heard folks wanted to have a have a way to walk and had a bike, and so we so there are sidewalks as I mentioned along West Sea Road and Old Pecos Trail and a bike lane along um, the Old Pecos Trail. Uh, there was a neighbors wanted to know that what the buildings the homes with on the property would respect the local architecture, and so we committed to build into our covenants a requirement to implement architectural standards that honor the area, you know, including the Pueblo style, the territorial style, using earth tone colors, wall step backs, create shade, et cetera. And um, thank you, Mayor and City Councilors. With that, I'll turn over to Carl. Thank you. We need another oath administered, please. 
My name is Carl Summer. Uh, my mailing address is P.O. Box 2476, Santa Fe, New Mexico, 87504. Do you need to know where I live? Okay. Uh, I solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I have in the in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth, nothing but the truth, and do this under the penalties of perjury. Thank you. Mayor, I will be mindful of the time, and uh, I, I don't want to go too fast, but I will, I will move quickly. I want to talk to you about three things. One, you're faced with a question, really one fundamental question tonight, and that is to answer for yourselves, is the R3 zoning, which effectively in this case is 2.6, not three acres, it's 2.6 units to the acre, more advantageous than the existing zoning, the R1 zoning, which would be uh, nine, nine units on this nine point something acres. That's fundamentally your question, and it is in your code. It's what you have to look at. And the code says, it says, is the different use category more advantageous to the community as articulated in the general plan and the adopted city plan? Well, Joseph told you on its face, it's articulated as to what policy there is. It's three to seven acres. But you look at your general plan and you will find in there other policies which militate in favor of and show that this is, this R3 is a more advantageous to the community. It may be unpopular for the people in this room, but as a community, you will find looking at your general plan as articulated, the policies show that this is more advantageous. And I'm not just, this isn't just fluff. Your general plan has an infill policy that says uh, on section 4-16, uh, the target density for new infill residential development in order to address affordable housing goal is a minimum of five acres. So under that standard, is this more advantageous than the R1? The answer is inescapably yes. Second, code the, the general plan policy talks about higher densities. And it says that the general plan states in both infill and future growth areas, the city must encourage densities and residential development that then existing zonas, zoning often allows higher densities than existing zoning. That's the policy. So under that policy, is the R3 effectively 2.6 better than R1? The answer is yes, inescapably. It's in, you can't even argue it. The code talks about, I mean, the, the general plan talks about sprawl. We all know what that is. And it's specific about limiting sprawl. This is an infill project that does limit sprawl. De development priorities in the general plan. The first development priority that has been established for decades is infill development areas. This is an infill development area. Finally, I would like to get really down to what this is important about this particular policy that makes this more advantageous. Your, your general plan says there shall be infill development at densities to support the construction of affordable housing. That's the express language of your code. The existing zoning, R1, no construction of affordable housing. The developer, whoever builds this, would be allowed to do a fee in lieu of because it is less than 10 units under your code. So under that policy, it is inescapable that the infill development will provide for the construction of affordable housing. And we talk about affordable housing in this sort of like generic way. Well, we want affordable housing. What does it mean on this project? This project has a plan. It will have five houses spread throughout. And you all are familiar with um, the, uh, the numbers. But if, if I could, I'd like to just show you what it means. What families are going to be living here? This is straight out of the existing area median income, size of houses, and prices. That, that will show up in this development. So I don't know if, uh, if, if they could turn on the scanner in the, in the back. They told me to tell them. Can we get the IT working so that the overhead works?
both places. <laughs> Okay, we have a we have a little bit of it working now. This is this is right out of your chart for affordable housing as it stands today. It might change when 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 somebody applies, but we follow these. So I bring this up because families are going to live here. Our proposal: there are three categories. The very low; um, those are the ones most in need. Those who are earning 50% to 65% of the area median income. That is the most needy group of families in this town. We're going to have two houses in that category. We're only required to have one. We're going to have two. The next category up is the interim category number uh, three, and that is area median income between 60, 65 to 85, 80% 80 of the area median income. We'll have two of those houses, and we'll have one in the 100%. This chart shows you the profile of the family that is going to live here. It is, for a two-person family, they're earning $32,000 a year. They can't live in this neighborhood right now. They will never live in this neighborhood. They will not have their kids playing in these arroyos, in this open space. They will not be here. The other end of that court category, as I've drawn the line between them, is the 100%. Uh, 100%. That's a family of four, and they're earning 80 k That's usually a two-parent household with four, two kids um, living in a two-bedroom, or, or excuse me, a three- or four-bedroom house. That's the family that's going to live here. Those are the families that are going to be here. And those are the families that are not going to be here if you leave things the way they are. And so I tell you that because this isn't just we want affordable housing. This is real affordable housing. You can picture these kids. You can see them growing up here. That's important. And that militates. That militates in favor of. That is more advantageous to us as a community than leaving it at R1 and taking money and putting it and doing affordable housing somewhere else if you ever get there with that money. Um, I, I think that the other thing that you're going to hear tonight, which is that there is a policy that has been argued in the, the uh, charter. It's this policy right here, 2.04. I have heard the argument that this is a reason to deny this particular zoning, that this provision of the um, uh, uh, the the charter deals with neighborhood preservation. And I think uh, uh, Councillor uh, Romero Worth was well, well familiar with this. I'm not going to go through the whole history. But the question is, is this some sort of super policy that says in this last sentence, public officials shall at all times exercise their powers with sensitivity to and respect for that cultural and neighborhood heritage. It will be urged on you that that somehow prevents you from granting this rezoning. This is not a standard in your land use code. It is a policy statement of values of our community. Yes, it informs what we do, but you have very specific, very specific policies, particularly that militate in favor of things that are more advantageous for the community. Um, are you almost complete? I'm almost done. In fact, I will be done with just this last thing. Thank you. I urge you, we urge you to follow your existing decisions that have been made. You decided on a general plan. It has guided this community. It will continue to guide this community. You followed that general plan in allowing the plazas, which brought the first affordable housing to this neighborhood. There are six houses across the Arroyo. There will be five more if you follow your existing decisions, your existing policies. We urge you to do that. We urge you not to throw that policy and procedure out because it's unpopular with 
with essentially the people who live uh, in the Soli Lomas area. Um, Thank you. That, Mr. Mayor, I really appreciate the time and I, I, I know you've been patient with us. Thank you very much. Thank you, appreciate it. Um, if we can not have a whole lot of discussion in the back of the room, I know you guys are trying to organize yourselves, which is great, but we're trying to keep, keep order here. The next order of business then is the public sworn public comment. And uh, we're gonna adhere to the policy of two minutes per person. You can pass the baton as you wish. Uh, you will need to swear in and, uh, and then we'll uh, take all the public testimony at this time. So you have the, you have the, po the podium. Mayor, if I could just go over a few rules, we also, I do have the list um, for a revised order of um, testimony. If you are part of that after this, um, then we can line up. We'll go with just individual public testimony. I want to confirm you're not part of the list of spoken. Okay, perfect. And then uh, you'll read that and your two minutes will be up on the screen so you can count, uh, keep track of your own time. We will let the alarm bling at the end and then we'll cut the microphone. So I do encourage you to wrap up as you get close to that time frame. Okay. And then if you'll just raise your hand. Perfect. I, Rhonda Payne, residing at 1616 Highland Street, solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth. And I do this under the penalties of perjury. Thank you. We really need quiet in the back. I know you're trying to organize yourselves, which is great, but we are going to give all of our attention to each of the individuals at the podium. So please keep it down. You have the floor. Hello, Mayor Weber, members of the council. My name is Rhonda Payne. I am the youngest of six children. We all grew up here in Santa Fe, and I'm here now with my siblings. We are going to speak to you individually, but I hope you hear our collective voice and why we came to this tough decision to offer this piece of our land, of our life, to the Santa Fe community. I will speak first, and then my brother and my sister and my um, sibling, Josie, is also on the line on Zoom. If I may, I'd like to give you a picture of what this development means to me. I grew up on the land to be developed. My parents, Ron and Nelica Wurst, moved to Santa Fe in 1969 and chose this spot to raise their family. For over 50 years, my family has been stewards of this piece of land. It is a very special piece of Santa Fe, for sure, and as I have grown, I've seen it change. My dad worked at St. Vincent's, so this location was great for him to be able to get to the hospital quickly. My mom was a physician at La Familia, and more than anything, she loved providing care for families, for children, to their parents, and their grandparents. This added to my mom's desire to develop the land so that more people and more families could move to our neighborhood that over time had quieted. In 1996, my parents sought the city's approval for a housing development, but were not approved. My parents had a wonderful dream to see homes for more families revive the neighborhood. The development was to be called Las Hermanas, an homage to me and my three sisters, especially my dear sister Margie, who passed away in 1992. I believe this proposed Old Pecos Trail Estates development, quite honestly, is much better than what my parents could have designed 26 years ago. And as a hermana, I am proud to see the land be used in a thoughtful way while accommodating growth in Santa Fe. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We need to swear you in, sir. I, Teo Worst, oh yeah. I, Teo Worst, residing at 33 Via del Sol, solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth. And I do this under the penalties of perjury. Thank you, sir. Mayor, council members, what I'd like to tell you about the property is what I remember. I remember coming home as a child um, from school, eager to get onto my BMX bike then go into the back property and then meet up with all of my friends, the neighborhood kids. And we'd be going back and forth across the Arroyo, jumping, practicing our cross-ups and tabletops and different things like that. When it snowed, we'd go down the same hills on sleds, you know, with, with my siblings. Um, my sisters would go around and they would organize uh, uh, treasure hunts and um, would also do um, obstacle courses for us to go over through on the bicycles and whatnot. 
And those were usually arranged in the Rams Club, which was a tree house that we had on the property. And, you know, as I got older, I um, would walk the property with my dad and we would discuss the development of this property and it, you know, becoming developed and whatnot. And so growing up, I always envisioned this property to be developed. And, you know, my dad would ask me, hey, Teo, where would you want your house? You know, that kind of fun thing. And um, I have to say what Pierre Amstroy has done, like my sister said, has really gone above and beyond even what I could have even dreamed of what this property could potentially be. So that is all I have, all I have for you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. I, Liz Fisher, um, residing at 38258 Ashford Way, solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I have in reference to the 2200 uh, Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth, and I do this under the penalties of perjury. Honorable Mayor, Council, Staff, um, as the eldest, I was the first to go to college where I met my husband and we settled near his family. Uh, over the years, my family has returned to Santa Fe frequently for the holidays and for vacations. And to this day, my husband and my grown children have special fondness for Santa Fe. My father was an exuberant person and loved to talk about his hopes and dreams with and for the family. As I started my own family, I lived my life with similar hopes and dreams for mine. If we, in our lives, we dream, we make plans, and hopefully our plans come to life. Uh, I'm now in a stage in life where my husband and I are retired. Uh, soon our children will be in a position uh, to choose where they want to live and work. Like my dad and his plans to have his children live close to him in Las Hermanas, I would love to be able to see my children and their families be close to me and my husband. The plan that Pierre has put together is a neighborhood I would like to live in. Thank goodness we have the option to see the land developed, as I don't believe my siblings and I would be able to do so on our own. When the city developed the general plan, I was hopeful for the possibilities as it would seem the city's vision and my father's vision were in sync. As a landowner in Santa Fe, it is my hope that law abiding and reasonable proposals such as this that have been many years in the making would come to life. And maybe now I could return to Santa Fe and live on on the land that I grew up on. Thank you very much. Oh, and my Joe, my sister Joe Wilson, I believe, is on Zoom. If that would be okay. Yeah, uh, Josie. Hello, Mayor. Uh, Councilwoman, can you hear me all right? Yes, we can. Um, hold on one moment. I need to swear you in. Okay. Thank you. Josie, can you say I and state your name? I, Josie Wilson. Residing at? Residing at 1737 Virginia Dale Street, Helena, Montana. Do you solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony you have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth and do this under the penalties of perjury? Yes, I solemnly swear. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, Mayor, uh, members of the council. I just want to take a moment to say that it would be easy to dismiss uh, our testimony because we have a financial interest in the property. As trustee, uh, I, I am here to represent, you know, not to repeat the stories of my siblings, uh, but that to, to share that we have a lifetime of, of uh, time in the community a life uh, with this property. It's taking us a long time to come to this point. My father passed away 15 years ago, my mom eight years ago. And uh, as trustee, we do need to uh, decide what to do with the property. It was not easy for us because my parents had this dream that the property could be developed one day, that we might be able to all live nearby each other. Uh, here we are near Christmas season and my parents would like the Ferralitos uh, we'd pick a, get sand from the arroyo and fill our bags and line the roof and uh, driveway of our home. But I can only imagine how nice it would be to do that with my parents uh, this Christmas season uh, and have homes nearby. 
like they had pictured. So I just beg that you don't dismiss us just because we have a financial interest in the property. Um, thank you very much for your consideration. Thank you. We now go to back to the line here and go back to swearing people in, wiping the mic if you'd like, whatever you'd like to do to prepare. You have to raise your right hand, sir. Oh, uh, yes, thank you. I, Kenneth Jacks, residing at 716 East Thea Road, solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth, and <clears throat> do this under the penalty of perjury. Um, as a point of, of, of um, clarification of an earlier testimony from the Montoya land use, that there will be a 75 foot boundary or buffer from the west boundary of the property. I don't understand the relevance of that to Old Pegos Trail, which is on the east side of the property. Um, and um, my concern about this is that this is the one of perhaps four parcels along this stretch of Old Pecos Trail. This is not infill, this is the beginning of sprawl. There is nothing there infilling, they're moving into an undeveloped area. Um, sprawl it is. And I support the existing uh, land use policy and oppose the, the, the approval of, in, of in, increased density. So that's all I have to say, thank you. Thank you. I, Larry Romero, solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth. And I do this under the penalties of perjury. Yes. Action. I, I, Carl V. Hill, residing in this area, solemnly de declare and affirm that the testimony I have in reference to the 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth, nothing but the truth, and do under the penalties of perjury. In 18 Lincoln. We're going to show you a three minute video. Um, Pony is sharing this with me. Can you hear that? And uh, we, we developed it together. Okay. The sound needs to be. Can you guys hear that? Can you hear that? Needs to be louder. Maybe, yeah, if somebody wants to hold the microphone close to the to the uh, speaker on the laptop. Okay. See the old days. Oh. They want to build high ceiling homes here. property 
with unaffordable housing will destroy it forever. Because you visualize the openness of this property and corridor with its scenic beauty, you realize the iconic and irreplaceable nature it carries. Are we the city different or are we the city indifferent? And I say that because as former state historian and professor of history, New Mexico history, that um, we always honored our open space here and, uh, and we honored our history and culture. And having 20 generations before me in this town, I say that, and this urban sprawl, proje urban sprawl project shows indifference to the natural beauty and wildlife. It's too dense. We need true affordable housing for our community, not million dollar homes. The land, the size of the homes, uh, the cost of building a home there is not going to be affordable to anyone except someone that can afford the average of close to about 750 to a million dollars. Thank you. Thank you. I think between the the video and the ta and the testimony, I, I think that you that's the time that allowed. We were at three minutes and 59 seconds. Okay, maybe. perfect. So Thank you. Good. Thank you. Whoever's next, please step up. You have the microphone. And if you want to wipe the microphone, we've got wipes there for you too. You can start with a fresh white. I, Randall Bell, residing at um, street name only. Um, at um, Viaje Pablo Real, solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth, and do this under the penalty of perjury. Thank you. Uh, good evening, uh, Honorable Mayor and members of the Council. Um, you really need to get close to the mic. Oh, sorry. Um, I'll, I'll be reading this because we have such limited time and I'm going to try to get through as much as I can. Sure. Um, I, <clears throat> Randall Bell, I'm the president of the Old Santa Fe Association. Uh, and we are here to speak in opposition to the applicants uh, rezoning um, and in support of the various neighborhoods. Many, many members of the neighborhood are here. So we are supporting them. First, I want to present these renderings 
which uh, the old Santa Fe Association, OSFA, had prepared and were presented to the Planning Commission based on the applicant's specifications in order to show the visual impact of the proposed build-out project were it approved. Um, it's, um, and I'd like to show the street, okay, yeah. Um, so this is now open ground with forest, wildlife, et cetera. The build out is going to be a highly dense visual. As you can see, there is going to be a large number of trees removed. Um, I, I know they said they're gonna do some replacement landscaping, but when you take out dozens of uh, mature, uh, pinyon junipers, it's uh, going to dramatically change the environment. Um, I previously submitted a detailed letter to staff for inclusion in the Planning Commission packet prior to the hearing. It was resubmitted in a timely fashion for inclusion in this hearing's packet. Uh, my comments are obviously abbreviated due to the time limitation, uh, but I specifically request and incorporate that letter, which is in the record as part of my testimony. Uh, we strongly, OSFA strongly recommends the governing body determine that the rezoning request be rejected at this time. The applicant's rezoning request is based on section 14, 3.5 C of the city's land use code, which provides that the governing body shall to grant a rezoning, rezoning request these reviewing entities must make complete findings of fact and show that it is more advantageous. The developer's application failed to provide any facts demonstrating that either of the two criteria apply to this rezoning. Am I done? Yes, sir. All right. Hello. I, Elizabeth West, residing at Senna Street, 318 Senna Street in Santa Fe, not in this location, but nearby, uh, solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth and do this under the penalties of perjury. I'm going to continue where uh, President Bell left off, and I, I do want to have time to reference the business of a mismatch. I hope I have time at the end to do that. A mismatch of uh, more development versus more open space. And a development is for people who live there, I understand that. In fact, we all are working on this together. I don't feel adversarial, just for the record. On the other hand, open space is something that we all share in, even those of us who do not live in a community like this. Uh, OSFA does not believe the facts alleged in the developer's application are sufficient to show that the higher density R3 zoning classification within the old Pecos Trail scenic corridor and the South Central Highway Corridor Protection Overlay District is more advantageous to the Santa Fe community than the current R1. The Santa Fe community includes not only existing neighborhoods near this property segment of old Pecos Trail, but includes other residents such as myself, and my family who lives way out south of town who do come to town and enjoy this almost park-like, relatively speaking, entrance into our historic town. It's something we all share. It includes many other people and this scenic and openness character of this segment of the Old Pecos Trail Scenic Carter described in the city's existing land use code as a special asset 
in the 1999 general plan and subsequent governing body resolution as iconic and irreplaceable. A mismatch is an invitation to keep open space. Thank you. Thank you. I, Bruce Throne, residing at 154 West Zia Road, solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth, nothing but the truth, and I do this under the penalties of perjury. Good evening. Um, I've lived uh, at this address for the last 32 years. I'm a resident of the city for the last 46 years. I submitted 45 pages of written comments with uh, attached exhibits and citations to the code, the general plan, it's in your packet. Um, I know you didn't get it until late last Friday, but I urge you to read that. The reason why that's as long as it is because it covers a lot of material that you haven't heard from the applicant and its submissions or from staff in, in, in their submissions. And I adopt my comments, those comments and my comments tonight as part of my sworn testimony. Commissioner Inohos Fall correctly found at the commission's uh, April 18th hearing that the applicant had not satisfied his burden of proof under the cri sole criteria that Mr. Summer said that they're relying on this case, uh, that they provide facts showing that uh, the, the proposed R3 rezoning is more advantageous to the community uh, as articulated in the general plan and other city plans than the existing R1 zoning. I emphasize the words as articulated because it, if you look at page 3-12 of that general plan, it articulates in the section and dealing with the future land use map, implementing policy 3-I-9, which states, quote, the Old Pecos Trail Scenic Corridor designates the Old Pecos Trail between Cordova Road and I-25 as a scenic roadway and recognizes its importance as an unspoiled entryway into downtown, development standards, including land use, density, and, des density and design controls, will be developed through a public participation process. The governing body reiterated that policy in city resolution 2015-92, stating that they, the governing body had not yet implemented that implementing policy yet at, at that stage, and it is undisputed that it hasn't been implemented to, implemented to date. Now, if you do a word uh, search of Go ahead, finish your, your thought. Well, I just want to point out that nowhere in the applicant's submissions, all of them, nowhere in staff submissions, even tonight, did you hear one mention of that implementing policy? And the point is that that inconsistency is the problem. That's the mismatch. And, by, and finally, the, I was on the public participation process. I, was, I participated, participated in it in the early 2000s. It's referenced in that city resolution, and it was not the city council that approved that art, that three to seven dwelling units per acre density. That was city staff. And the reason you know that is just read that implementing policy and read that city resolution. The two are irreconcilable. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> Hi, we need you to take the oath. Okay. Uh, my name is Pat Lillis. Please raise your right hand. Oh, my name is Pat Lillis. I live at 2119 Coneja Drive. I solemnly swear, declare, and affirm that the testimony I have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth and do, so, do this under the penalties of perjury. Thank you. Oh, good evening. I oppose rezoning. As land use staff knows, since July, I've been submit, I submitted three IPRA requests, have visited and emailed libraries, archives, museums, and have asked land use staff for the original 1999 future land use map. I wanted to see the original map for two reasons. The first reason was in July. I saw the staff had removed the Old Pecos Trail Scenic Corridor from the future land use map. 
It was there January 28th. Was this, this means that land use staff without any authorization removed the old Pecos Trail Scenic Corridor after the applicant had begun this process. Why? The second reason is because within the 1999 general plan, that is on the website now, the future land use map is not readable. It appears to have been deliberately altered with the removal of the text, the Old Pecos Trail Scenic Corridor test from the, le from the legend, and the map is folded oddly to cover the corridor. Why again? Because I believe that land use and the applicant know that the Old Pecos Trail Scenic Corridor has not been assigned the R37 zoning. Land use contacted me yesterday and said that the copy of the 1999 original map has been found. The good news is the old Pecos Scenic Corridor is clearly marked on this map. It's real. There is a yellow three to seven designation on the map. As pre previously stated, that designation must have been added by staff as there's no amendment and the text in the general plan clearly states that standards were never set meaning that R3 to R7 does not apply to this property. The evidence is written in the general plan. Also yesterday, I downloaded the future land use map off the map gallery. I saw that the Old Pecos Trail Scenic Corridor has not been returned to the map as it was, but instead has been revamped without and downgraded to a road to dismiss its importance. Is staff allowed to pick and choose what to put on the map? Thank you. Thank you. I, Debbie Berghauser, residing at 2130 Plaza La Vista, solemnly declare and affirm the testimony I have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth and do this under the penalties of perjury. I am the president of the Plaza's Homeowners Association and I am testifying this evening on behalf of the Plaza's HOA. The Plaza's consist of 40 homes located just north of West Zia Road and the subject property. The entrance to the community is on Old Pecos Trail. Our HOA board surveyed our homeowners to determine their thoughts about the rezoning request for 2200 Old Pecos Trail. Of the 84% who responded, 85% opposed the zoning change because it would result in oversaturating that property with too many houses and would forever impair the irreplaceable visual openness and character of the Old Pecos Trail Scenic Corridor. I wish to make clear that our HOA does not oppose development at the property's existing R1 zone density or an innovative PUD type subdivision there. In fact, the plazas was rezoned PUD2 and is an example of how a planned unit development with two homes per acre can maintain the visual openness and character of the Old Pegasus Trail Scenic Corridor. In our case, Chapman Homes, a longtime respected Santa Fe developer and builder, used an innovative approach to satisfy the city requirement for open space by clustering 40 homes in the center of the property and encircling the homes with almost 10 acres of open space. The homes are set back from Old Pecos Trail and are integrated into the recessed topography of the land so that the development is barely visible from Old Pecos Trail. In closing, the Plaza's HOA asks that you, our elected representatives, do two things. One, deny this rezoning request and two, proceed to do what the city committed to do in the 1999 general plan by codifying specific density and other development standards for the Old Pecos Trail Scenic Corridor. Thank you. Thank you. I, Lucia Dykeman, residing at 2126 Calle Tecolote, solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth. And I do this under the penalties of perjury. 
mayor and members of the city council. I would like to speak about the findings of fact number 12, which states that the commission conducted a site visit on August 18th, 2022. This, this statement stops short of a full description. A request was made from commissioner for commissioners to be given a visit, a site visit by the planning department, and a plan was outlined. This request outlined the um, what was expected to be in the site visit. That would be to see the adjoining neighborhood, Soli Lomas, Roya Chimiso, to the west, to see Zia Road, which extends through Soli Lomas, and to see the old Pecos Trail scenic corridor running between St. Michael's and Rodeo Road. The visit did happen on August 18th, but none of the items that I just mentioned occurred on that visit. It was a very abbreviated walk. As a group, we walked on the sidewalk across Old Pecos Trail on the other side of the development down the sidewalk and back. And then we crossed Old Pecos Trail and walked down Zia about 125 feet. And we stood on the road at Zia. No one was allowed to go on the subject property and no one could see the foothills Arroyo, which bisects the property. 18 poles had been erected by the developer's team. We discovered at that meeting that instead of the poles being placed at the 75 foot setback, they had been placed further into the property, distorting the setback and making it look like it was deeper than it actually is. This is important because the condition of law adopted by the commission in the case 5063 expressly relied in part on the finding of fact number 12, but that fact does not describe the limited scope that no one could go on the site and the polls were incorrectly placed. Thank you. Thank you. I, John Penn Lafarge, residing at 647 Old Santa Fe Trail, solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I have reference in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth and do this under the penalties of perjury. Good evening. It is imperative that the council recognize the importance of the last unspoiled entrance to our town. In 1912, our foresighted leaders decided that the way for Santa Fe to be successful was to emphasize that its history and identity are directly connected to its authenticity and integrity, the unique mixture of three cultures and the beginnings of the art colony. This is how we have become world famous by people travel thousands of miles to visit. Then in 1999, the old Pecos Scenic Trail Trail Scenic Corridor was made part of the general plan because the city council saw that the entrances into our town are irreplaceable. There are three entrances from Interstate 25. There is the loveliness of Cerrillos Road as it conveys our unique heritage and sensibility. To the city's discredit, the second entrance, St. Francis Drive, is to be ruined by the building of tall, dense view-blocking apartments. Our last unspoiled entrance is Old Pecos Trail. We have fought several times to save this entrance already. Saving the entrances to our town is not an academic exercise. It is because we have preserved our special qualities that, out of the entire world, in 2017, Santa Fe won the National Geographic Society's Sense of Place Award. If we try hard enough, we will manage to ruin our sense of place, even while we think our development to be clever. The goose that laid the golden egg is tough enough to have lasted this long, but she will take only so much abuse before she dies. 20 years from now, when Santa Feans ask, what happened? I do not want to have to answer from my grave. I told you so. I ask you to deny this application. 
Excuse me. We're not. I said at the beginning we weren't going to applaud. We're not going to talk out of turn. Please respect the meeting decorum. Okay, I guess I have to take this off. It'd help. You can't hear me, right? Not at all. <laughs> okay. Oh, my name. I. Sorry. I, my, uh, Diane McInnes, residing at 110 Calle Paisano, solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth, and do this under penalty, the penalties of perjury. Thank you. You think I'm short? <laughs> <laughs> that way we can hear you. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you all for this opportunity to speak. Please accept my previously written comments and attachments. I hope you got them because they were lost in the uh, land use department as sworn testimony. I live in District 2, and I'm speaking to support the 1,243 people representing every district in Santa Fe who signed a petition to protect Old Tra Pecos Trail Scenic Corridor from piecemeal rezoning. Those present at the Planning Commission meeting on July 21st heard Commissioner Pava specifically ask staff if it had suggested alternatives to the developer, such as the R2 PUD, similar to the Plaza's development. The response was the staff interprets its job as to support the developer in whatever zoning he requests and be, because the applicant pays a fee. However, it is the responsibility of staff and of this governing body to follow the implementing policy, the city policy 3-1-9 as articulated on pages 3-12 and 3-4 of the city's general plan and reiterated in City Resolution 2015-92. The city committed to maintaining Old Pecos Trail as an unspoiled scenic corridor. The general plan described it as iconic and irreplaceable. It directed staff to immediately engage in public participation process to establish and codify appropriate development that would visually protect the scenic corridor, provide trails and open space, and maintain the historic nature of Santa Fe. This has not been done. The community at large supports appropriate infill development, consistent with that articulated in the general plan and reiterated in city resolution 2015-92. We ask the governing body to follow through on its promise to complete the required implementing policy of public participation, to develop specific density and other development standards, and to reject this premature rezoning application which endangers the entire corridor and the character of Santa Fe. It is not advantageous to the community at large as articulated in the general plan. Thank Many you. are ready and willing to Thank support you. these efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, Peter Ives, residing at 140 West Zia Road, solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth and do so under the penalties of perjury. Mayor, members of the City Council, it's a pleasure to appear before you this evening on this significant matter. I had to start my presentation. Uh, uh, with a, an objection to what has... Hang on one second. Could somebody please silence that? If your phone is not silenced, could you please do it now? We like Star Wars, but no. <laughs> Thank you, Obi-Wan. <laughs> okay, first... please silence it. You, Councillor Ives was about to get started, and it's very distracting. 
Okay, go ahead, sir. So I had an objection because based upon the rules that were referenced earlier in the evening, uh, which I reviewed after uh, basically during the break, it did not appear that there was any time allowed for the applicant to provide any testimony outside of the public hearing uh, as everybody else is permitted to uh, present. So I, I object, uh, I suppose it's a procedural due process objection uh, to the proceeding here this evening. Um, I too submitted comments uh, via an email October 11th uh, to Ms. Moore, uh, which uh, unfortunately have not appeared in the packet materials. So would object on that uh, basis as well. So jumping to my substance, um, the piece that I had submitted was addressed to the issue of the commitments made by the city. And uh, Bruce Throne a little earlier quoted from the general plan, uh, and I won't requote that, but I will quote a different section. And this was in the general plan summary, also from 1999. And it states there under implementing policies on page two, states those are at the end of each chapter and represent commitments to specific actions. They may refer to existing programs or call for establishment of new ones. And one of those is uh, uh, 3-1-9, adopt an old Pecos Trail scenic corridor designation and development standards for old Pecos Trail between Cordova Road and I-25. Now, it's been interesting being here tonight and listening to the proponents, because not only as city staff, but also Mr. Carnes, Mr. Summer, and the proponent not mention the fact that these references to the development of the scenic corridor are in the general plan. So we urge you to pause this process, not approve the development, engage in the uh, uh, the planning that is called for and committed to by the city in the general plan uh, before considering any further development within the corridor from I-25 to Corridor Road. Thank you. Thank you. And happy to answer any questions if there are any. We'll give you... That's, a, that's called for in the rules. So. We'll provide for that when the time comes. We're first going to let your other folks have a chance to have their testimony, sir. Who's next? She is, but I'm doing some podium cleanup really fast. Okay. Housekeeping. Ready? Good evening, Mayor Weber. And my you raise your right hand, please. And good evening to you. Good evening. And esteemed counselors. I, Elena Sparrow, residing at 154 West Sea Road, solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I, I, in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning, shall be the truth and nothing but the truth, and do under the penalties of do this under the penalties of perjury. Thank you. All right. I adopt my portal written comments as part of my sworn testimony. One of the reasons why I've pointed out that this requested upzoning is not more advantageous to our community than the current R1 zoning is its adverse impacts to community public safety on West Sea Road and this section of Old Pecos Trail. In my experience and observations of daily walking, bicycling, and driving during the past 10 years. Staff's memo to you argues you should dismiss community safety testimony and concerns by other opponents because they are not supported by an independent traffic engineer. The baseline traffic counts along Old Pecos Trail relied on in the developer's traffic impact analysis for its 10-year traffic volumes were conducted on three days in November of 2021, which he and city staff claim was post-pandemic. You don't need to be an engineer to understand that those counts are not reliable 
for 10-year projections in that analysis. Because as we've all been reading, many state employees, even today, continue to work remotely. The TIA's trash, uh, crash, <laughs> crash, the TIA's crash data from 2016 to 2019 is stale. It assumes one car per household when national averages are 2.6, and its numerous unsupported assumptions make it unreliable and unreasonable. I urge the governing body to deny this rezoning application and to implement the old Pecos Trail Scenic Corridor implementing policy in the 1999 general plan as this body directed in City Resolution 2015-92. For 10 years, I have walked my Sheltie on West Sea Road, and if this rezoning were approved, I would no longer feel safe to walk my dog there, nor would anyone else. Thank you for consideration of this testimony. Thank you very much. I, Lily O'Leary, residing at 2307 Calle Halcón for the last 17 years, solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth and do this under the penalties of perjury. Good evening, Mayor and Councilors. In addition to being the scenic and historic entrance to, to Santa Fe, Old Pecos Trail has become an off on and off ramp to I-25. Drivers are often well in excess of the posted 45 mile an hour speed limit. As stated in the applicant's development proposal, allowing even promoting new turns across four lanes of traffic are accidents waiting to happen. Early this year, I spoke with Max Valero at the State Department of Transportation regarding my concerns about the traffic impact of this proposed development. At the end of our conversation, Mr. Valero stated, an intersection is not considered hazardous until a fatality has occurred. On Monday evening, December 5th, there was an accident in Old Pecos Trail and West Zia intersection involving two vehicles which required police attention and an ambulance. It is unknown to me the cause of the accident, but one of the vehicles went over the embankment and landed in one of the proposed building lots. West Zia is a poorly designed rural residential road with no shoulders and so or sidewalks. It's heavily used by cyclists, pedestrians, and drivers. The degree of curve, curve length, and stopping site distances are not conducive for the addition of an ingress, egress to a development. Traffic impact analysis done in no November 21 during a peak in COVID when many people were telecommuting versus the actual roadway and neighborhood anecdotal evidence may work on paper, but might not necessarily work on implementation. The Zia Old Pecos Trail intersection is not an isolated intersection. The traffic picture presented is much smaller than the actual traffic flow. The developer's traffic engineer said in his, in, in his analysis that the St. Mike's Old Pecos Trail intersection was already at capacity and near failure. He mentioned the old Las Vegas Highway Rodeo Road Old Pecos Trail intersection, but did not elaborate. It is an intersection desperately in need of attention, but no one wants to address it, be, that it, address it given that it's comprised of state, county, city, and national roadways. It is for traffic and safety concerns that I request the governing body reject the developer's plan and request for upzoning. Thank you. Thank you. A lot of masks up here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have this. Is that the screen or no? Yeah. Did I have a I Ricardo Martinez residing at 720. Oh yeah. I Ricardo Martinez residing at 725 Mesilla Road, Salami Square, and affirm that the testimony I'm a, I have in reference to 2022 20, Opecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth, nothing but the truth, and will do so under the penalties of perjury. Got through that part. Okay. My question to the uh governing body is why are we selling out our corridor for 20, 20 expensive homes and five affordable units. Uh, I looked up the, the your Santa Fe housing inventory report from this is it here from nineteen uh, uh, two thousand nineteen and noticed that one thousand nine hundred one uh, apartment units were approved and paid the fee in lieu of of fifteen and it could have paid had fifteen percent affordable units that would have been eight hundred and and two hundred and eighty five units that that. Uh, affordable use that never got built. 
and was and you and you guys have turned the blind eye on that. The council could have been could have your this body has the power to tell the to tell the developer that they are asking for is not appropriate for this for this corridor and not letting the developer dictate to you guys uh what 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 the zoning should be. You have you need to protect this corridor. Once again, you guys have the power to uh to 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 change to make ask for a smaller development. I mean, you could do something as maybe 14, 14 homes with still uh, two affordable units, and that would probably satisfy something. Take less of the property out, and I still think you have the power. Don't turn this turn turn a, a blind eye on this precious corridor, and like you did on on two hundred eighty five units. And uh, it's very important that uh, this corridors and all our corridors around town. We just had a meeting last night on the uh, corridor on Alfreda Street, and uh, those things, those corridors are important. We we just if we keep losing our corridors, like like Ben says. We're losing that going egg. I also just want to do one quick reminder uh, that whoever uses does the Zoom meeting that they make sure that they mute the the, the speaker right away because at the last meeting for the planning commission it was a it was a big ruckus that I don't think the I think it was the fault of by not being uh, muted when they were supposed to be muted. So I just keep that in mind so that whoever is doing that. Thank you. Thank you, uh, sir. Do you want to take your slide with you? If you'd, we can keep it if you'd like. But if you don't, you should take it. Oh, you did. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Uh, I, John Pound, residing at twenty three hundred two Calle Halcon, solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I have in reference to twenty two hundred. Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth and do this under the penalties of perjury. Good evening and thank you for being so patient with all of us. Uh, Mary Ann and I join in opposition to the application. I'm gonna sound a little lawyerish and I apologize, but I think you can bear it for two minutes. Uh, section 14-3.5C of the Land Use Code speaks to the criteria for approval of zoning change requests. As applied here tonight, the code says the developer has the burden of providing facts showing that adding about 16 homes, mostly in the $900,000 range, is more advantageous to the community than protecting the scenic corridor. The developer's application report, as has been pointed out, doesn't even mention the Old Pecos Trail Scenic Corridor implementing policy in the 1999 general plan, or that the city has not yet implemented density standards to protect the scenic corridor. You are being asked tonight to ignore the burden of proof imposed on the applicant. You are also being asked to ignore the applicant's burden in section 14-7.1 of the city code to demonstrate with facts tonight that the proposed development complies with the 50% open space requirement for each projected lot. Tonight, a representative of the developer uh, told you what the city council's state of mind was in the 1960s while acknowledging that he wasn't here in the 1960s. The city council expresses its intent in its official documents. We all know that. Now, here's what's happening, I think. I think the applicant is trying to throw a fastball past the city council. And I think the city council has the ability to recognize and hit a fastball. Thank you. Thank you. I, Annie Campbell, residing at 110 West Sear Road, solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the oops, shall be the truth and nothing but the truth and do this under penalties of perjury. Sorry about that. Okay. I'm not a public speaker, so I'm just going to read this to you. Um, I've lived in Santa Fe for 37 years, and I reside in the home of the former Worst family. Um, 
For this rezoning approval, the applicant must demonstrate that his request is more advantageous to the community. This developer proposes 25 18 foot high homes, five designated affordable, and the remaining 20 will sell for upwards of 700,000. Who can afford to buy one of these 700,000 homes, not your average Santa Fean? The five affordable homes do not begin to touch our city's problem of housing, and it's a distraction from the important issues involved in this rezoning request. It will destroy the beauty and visual openness of the Old Pecos Trail Scenic Corridor and set precedents for increased rezoning along the only appealing entrance into Santa Fe. Secondly, it will destroy 116 healthy mature trees and the wildlife habitat that those tree groves provide. This very council thought trees were important enough to warrant issuing the Tree Smart Resolution 2021-18. That resolution states that trees provide significant benefits to the city, moderating our local climate, improving air quality, conserving water, and harboring wildlife. It also refers to the value of maintaining mature trees and that trees provide benefits for present and future generations in our community. Mayor Weber, your action plan on your website says stop the failed system of an empty lot led housing strategy of one project at a time that's proposed for a specific piece of land and advanced in an adversarial way that angers neighbors. Well, the neighborhoods are angry, and I would ask you to uphold your resolutions and policies and deny the applicant this rezoning request. Thank you. Wearing a mask and glasses and everything else, I'll tell you, it's disconcerting. I know there's a couple of the city councilors uh, having the same problem. Um, my name is Bob Dunn, and I reside at 730 Descanso Road in Santa Fe. It's on the north side. And I solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth and do this under the penalties of uh, death or perjury. I, I'm, I'm here and I, I, have to, I have to say, the people who are have testified here are a little bit older than you guys, okay? And the reason we're objecting to it is because we got here, moved here because of the beauty of Santa Fe. These are your constituents and you've got to listen to them. Why are we, why are we throwing away such beauty as that scenic corridor? When I give directions for friends who drop, fly into Santa Fe, or excuse me, fly into Albuquerque, I absolutely insist that they go the old Pecos Trail route. I went out to the vet center this afternoon. I go that way and I come back and I look at it and it's beautiful. It's not crowded with homes that are really only going to benefit uh, the wealthy. I mean, five affordable housing. I haven't heard any pricing on that, by the way. Um, and the, the builder will probably say when the time comes, oh, I can't afford to build that pay. So they're going to look for a little bit of a... Uh, variance of some sort from the city council. We can't do that. In your hearts, those of you who, and a lot of you have lived here all your lives, you've got to take this into consideration. This is not trying to get around some law. It's a, it's in the policy and it has been for a long time. Quail Run started their development a long time, knowing that the 1999 general plan was going to come and they did a beautiful job. You can't see Quail Run, but you can see the homes that are going to be built here. And I really want all of you guys and ladies to really consider what's happening in Santa Fe. If this is approved, what's next? What's next? And I think it's absolutely wrong. I've lived here for 43 years, and I'm more emotional about this than I have been for a lot of things. So I just want you to know that we've got to protect the last decent corridor that we have in Santa Fe. So please consider that because of the future 
of your children and of you guys living here. Thank you. Thank you. I, Celia Craig Kimball, residing at 36 Media Luna, solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth, and I do this under penalties of perjury. Mayor and counselors, I urge the governing body to deny rezoning. The proposed development would redesign Old Pecos Trail, creating serious negative impacts on traffic safety. The traffic impact analysis submitted primarily assesses whether this proposal would add to congestion, but does not adequately consider its impact on safety. The developer's proposal would require vehicles leaving the majority of the lots to drive southbound, even if their destination is northward toward downtown. Drivers would be required to merge onto Old Pecos Trail, often into speeding traffic, cross four lanes of an arterial road, and make a U-turn where there is no traffic signal to assist. Vehicles must make these dangerous, unprotected U-turns at one of two locations, imperiling themselves and others. The southern location at Calle Espejo is currently marked no U-turn. Espejo means mirror. If this proposal is approved, will this intersection strewn with the debris of crashes sadly be nicknamed Broken Mirror? Traffic engineers recognize that U-turns are highly dangerous maneuvers, particularly at rush hour. This is also common sense. U-turns unnecessarily challenge the skills of drivers and cause accidents, adding to the burden of the city's first responders. This ill-conceived and poorly thought out redesign ignores safety. Traffic engineers have oversimplified the hazards, not applying foresight to the human consequences. It is alarming to approve this redesign without consideration of safer alternatives. It is the city's foremost responsibility to protect our community and all travelers on Old Pecos Trail. The governing body must not rezone this property nor allow this unsafe traffic proposal to be realized. Thank you, respectfully submitted. Thank you very much. I, Gerald Wise, residing at 2304 Calle Colibri, solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth and do this under the penalties of perjury. Mr. Mayor and Council, I'm asking that you deny this rezoning request because it doesn't meet the three criteria for a zoning request. There was no error in the original zoning. The use of the surrounding area has not changed. I've walked a dog through Soling Lomas for over 30 years, different dogs. I've seen different neighbors, but, and, and actually in the, I'm seeing more people pushing strollers now than I have in the last five years too, but the neighborhood hasn't changed. And number three, the request is not more advantageous to me, to my neighbors, or the city of Santa Fe as a whole. It'll have a negative impact, as mentioned before, on traffic, on the wildlife corridor, and its effect on the old uh, Pecos Trail scenic corridor, which was described by the people sitting in your seats as the only unspoiled entryway into downtown and an iconic and irreplaceable asset to all of Santa Fe will be lost. And once it's lost, it, it's not going to be able to be replaced. Um, the zoning request, if it's granted, will, will surely be used as a precedent for other zoning requests. And you've heard that there are other parcels that are open and available. And it's going to destroy for all time the things that make Santa Fe Santa Fe. And to sum up, um, the land is zoned R1. It should remain R1. And I hope that you'll listen to me and the thousand people who have signed the petition asking that this be fine. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Ann Wrinkle, 
Presiding at 2310 Calle Calabri, solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth and do this under the penalties of perjury. Good evening, Mayor, Council, Councilors. My name is Ann Rinkle. I've lived at, in Santa Fe and in Soli Lomas for 17 years. And I just wanted to begin with the definition of precedent is doing something that establishes a, stat, a standard, a pattern or policy that'll be used in the future. If this rezoning request from R1 to R3 is granted for 2200 Old Pecos Trail, allowing to create 25 lots, that's 25 houses plus up to 25 accessory dwellings, it sets an alarming precedent for future development along this historical scenic corridor. The rezoning and higher density development of this project will threaten the important scenic and historic benefits to the Santa Fe community at large of the old Pe Pecos Trail scenic corridor defined and adopted as we've heard tonight as one of the implementing policies in the general plan of 1999 adopted by the city resolution number 1999-45 as follows. The Old Pecos Trail Scenic Corridor designates Old Pecos Trail between Cordova Road and I-25 as a scenic roadway and recognizes its importance as an unspoiled entryway into downtown. Development standards, including land uses, density, and design controls will be developed through a public participation process. End quote. Where is this pub public participation process? Where is the community input? Where is the city's role in protecting the public's interest? The city needs to move forward on a proper development process to address this and any future proposals in the area and not set piecemeal, random, ill-advised precedents which other developers could take up at any time. I ask the governor, the governing body, do you want to be responsible for the obliteration of the old Pecos Trail Scenic Corridor, the last remaining open space historically associated with the sense of arrival into Santa Fe? This very feature sets the tone and ambiance and preserves the natural beauty of our city for everyone. If you approve this rezoning request, it will be gone. And once it's gone, it's gone forever. I urge you to vote no on the rezoning request for 2200 Old Pecos Trail. Thank you. I actually got sick last time. I, Theodore Lewis Kreifels, residing at 2300 Calle Halcón, Santa Fe, 7505, solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth, nothing but the truth, and do this under the penalties of perjury. Thank you. <clears throat> Good evening, Mayor and Councilors. Thank you for this opportunity to speak and for considering my testimony. I oppose the rezoning request for the same reasons addressed by those who have testified before me. But in addition, I wish to specifically address the applicant's failure to submit documentation as required in the city's land use code, showing that this proposed division, subdivision comply with the applicable 50% open space on each lot. For example, it's my understanding that comments by D being in Gessner of the city's land use and terrain management department included in the staff's report to the planning commission noted that the applicant's site plan does not identify the storm water ponding areas on each lot. This is required by code to address drainage due to new impervious services such as driveways and walkways. And I wanna take a moment to remind you that a driveway cannot be included as a private open space on this lot, according to our own code. These requirements identified by one of your own staff have not been met. Next, in addition, the applicant's signature sign, significant tree survey in plan set number four, submitted on March 21st, indicates that he plans to remove 116 trees defined as significant trees in the land use code. That is deciduous trees that are six inches in diameter or greater, and evergreen trees that are eight feet taller or greater. He plans to replace them with only 46 new trees. So you can imagine what that might look like. This is less than half the number removed. I have more details, but I wanna actually take a moment to go off script and speak from my heart. I know that you all love Santa Fe and that this may be a tough decision for some of you. And I'm not opposed to development. That's what it's enabled us to buy homes here over time. It's easy to characterize us 
as NIMBYs. For, um, you know, not in my backyard. But the point I wanna make and leave you with is that this is not a backyard problem. This is a front yard problem. This is your front yard and your front yard and your front yard and our front yard. This is not just solely Lomas in the local neighborhoods. It's the whole darn city. The OPT conveys, conveys, you know, moves people along, many residents and visitors to the heart of our beautiful city. Thank you, sir. That's why it's protected in the first place. Thank you. So please don't change the character of this historic road. Much obliged. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. I, Eric Obo, presiding at 36 Media Luna, solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth, and I do this under penalties of perjury. Mayor and counselors, before I begin, I would request that you do not grant the request of the applicant and the developer to rebut. Uh, I, I think they had many bites at the apple. Um, I've got a minute 48 left. Uh, Mayor and counselors, my name is still Eric Obo and I still live at 36 Media Luna. I oppose this rezoning request. Rezoning on the old Pecos Trail should stop until city staff completes the work directed by the governing body in the general plan and the resolution you now know the number of 2015-92. Explicit direction has twice been given to city staff to convene a public process and develop standards for adoption into the code to protect the iconic entrance into the city. I've worked in government in Santa Fe for more than 30 years, and I've learned to do what my bosses tell me to do, even if it's hard, and especially if those bosses are elected officials. In the staff memo for the July 21st Planning Commission meeting, the importance of the corridor was dismissed with a single sentence because, quote, no boundaries or design standards exist, end quote. On August 18th, Maggie Moore of Land Use informed the Planning Commission that she can contacted an ex-colleague to find out what happened with this public process, and he recalled that sometime after 2015, they had to, they had come to an impasse with the working group. Clearly, land use takes no responsibility for and has no plans to ever complete this work. Running a public process and getting to consensus or grudging consent is difficult work, but that's exactly what the former governing bodies have directed staff to do. Until language is drafted and presented for adoption into code, staff must keep trying. Without standards, future incompatible projects may be proposed in this corridor in a piecemeal manner. Please ask yourself these questions. Do resolutions adopted by you have meaning? And should staff follow the directives given in by them? Should staff only be expected to complete those directives that are not too difficult? Should you continue to set policies and issue directives if they are to be ignored by staff? Please reject this proposal. Thank you. Thank you. I, Beverly Spears, residing at 1897 Conejo Drive, solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning, proposed rezoning, shall be the truth and nothing but the truth and do this under the penalties of perjury. <clears throat> uh, good evening, mayor and counselors. I would like to speak about the process here, having observed several of these requests for variances and rezonings in the last several years, including the Zia Station project. I think it is important to point out that the developers and landowners are motivated almost entirely by profit. They are asking for suspension of the rules, in other words, variances, or they are asking for the rules to be changed, in other words, rezoning, in order to maximize their profit. Santa Fe citizens, on the other hand, often oppose these proposed variances or rezonings because the existing zoning rules are there for a purpose. They are in place to protect the character of neighborhoods, natural vegetation, streetscape, traffic safety, noise control, privacy, and views of the sky and mountains. These are quality of life issues which are important to all of us. But in these hearings, 
At the Planning Commission or at the City Council, the developer and landowner are given unlimited time to present their project and whitewash it gloriously and sometimes falsely through omissions and distorted representations. But the public only gets one particular moment to speak. Because the developer is not following the rules, but rather trying to either suspend them or change them, the public should have much more opportunity to oppose these suspensions or changes. But in actuality, the developer and landowner are always given the last word when the council or commission is discussing the matter after public comment is closed. This is a grave injustice, which has resulted in damage to the quality of life in Santa Fe and the unique character of our beloved city. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Charlie O'Leary, and I reside at 2307 Calle Halcón. I solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth, and do this under the penalties of perjury. Thank you, Mayor and Council Members. Um, I, I, I wrote a whole page tonight about how unfair the process has been for um, public participation over this last 12 months. It kind of feels a little bit like um, we're in the matrix here um, because it has been so one-sided and so difficult for the public and the neighborhood to um, um, make its case for why we think um, neighborhoods are important. But I'm not going to talk about that. I, I wanted to just um, point out a couple of other points that have been made tonight that um, kind of speak to that. Um, first of all, we're just hearing for the first time tonight that um, we don't know who the developer is. Um, I think this is basically a, a plan to um, subdivide as many lots as possible with some covenants and um, the, the power invested in you being able to approve this zoning. You're going to be able to double the number of homes. I imagine you're doubling the value of the property. Um, but it's going to be a complicated or it should be a complicated project if it's going to be a beautiful one. Um, the other sort of matrixy thing about this is that you don't even get to um, vote on the plat. That's already been approved, yet we don't really even know what it's going to look like. So um, I just want to remind you that this is just a request, right? You don't have to approve this. This is just a request by um, the applicant. Let's see, I think that's, well, and, and I also wanted to mention a couple of other things, just basically that some of the um, points about not building in the Arroyo, that that helps with um, recreational, you can't build in an Arroyo anyway. So the neighborhood um, points that were made by the applicant that essentially they're showing They've listened to the neighborhood. We're, we're all quite weak. Um, so I, I urge you not to approve this request. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, I had to get up. I did, hear, I did listen to what you said. I just had to step up for a minute. Please go ahead next. My name is Sue Rempel. I live at um, 2314 Camino Jalapai, Oguen Pueblo Alegre across from Frenchie Steel. Um, and I opposed the rezoning of this property from R1 to R3 because. I'm sorry, did you complete the oath? Oh, no. You have to actually sorry. swear here. Swear. Before you get to the testimony, you have to raise your right hand and thank take you the for oath. the reminder. Stop. I apologize for the interruption. <laughs> and. Uh, my name is Sue Rempel, and I reside at Camino Hallapai, and I solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth, nothing but the truth, and do this under the penalties of perjury. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for reminding me. Um, it's been a long night. I oppose the rezoning of the property um, from R1 to R3 because of the number of dwellings that are 
being proposed, the impact on traffic near an already busy intersection, and the degradation of wildlife in that existing wildlife corridor of the Arroyo. Um, I share the concerns expressed by many about the impact of the proposed development would have on Opecos Trail scenic corridor, whose legal parameters the city has yet struggled with, but not yet. And I believe they should cut it by before any further development along the route is contemplated, let alone approved, especially given our city's desire for infill development and more affordable housing. Um, and then aside, I, my grandparents grew up, uh, lived in New Mexico since I was a little girl in Albuquerque. And my parents grew up in Albuquerque and we always came to Santa Fe to have a special place that holds a special place in my heart. And after college, I moved here. But it is the only place that I believe is the beautiful entrance into Santa Fe that I bring. I always have come. I've taught my kids and grandkids and friends, kids always about the history by driving through there and sharing stories. And the beautiful open space that is there to me is the beautiful place that is the entrance we have to Santa Fe that I live off of Cerritos Road and I love where I live, but it is no longer that beautiful entry I take. Usually I always go up to Opecos and come back down just because of how much I love coming into Santa Fe that way. And if we do anything to destroy it, we can't undo it. Thank you. My name is Christy Hensbetter. I live at 928 Camino Arrive. I solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I have in reference to the 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth and do this under the perjuries of penalties of perjury. I've lived on the west side of the city for 35 years, and I oppose this rezoning request a vacant property within the city designated as the Old Pecos Trail Scenic Corridor in its 1999 general plan, because I agree with other members of this community that city approval of it would constitute piecemeal zoning within the city quarter contrary to the future use and implementing policy. Recognizing that the scenic quarter's importance as an unspoiled entryway into, down, into the downtown is paramount to its development standards, including land use density, and it will be done through a public participation process. I believe with a lot of other people here this evening that the public is interjected into this process a little late. And my friend Bruce Throne, who's done extensive work on this, was only limited to two minutes. And he had a lot more that he could share of a very quality um, orientation. I believe that this is truly a community-wide issue and it affects all the residents of Santa Fe, not just the neighborhoods adjacent. And there again, with others, the iconic and irreplaceable asset of this is something that really strikes my heart. To me, the moment when it was the most silent in this room this evening is when the video was played. And we all just sort of, at least I did, I felt within me that like, this is so beautiful. I mean, how can this deer and uh, landscape that we almost take for granted here be replaced by a few homes in the name of five affordable housing units. So thank you for considering my testimony. Thank you. Hi. I, Philip Crump, residing at 1897 Conejo Drive, 
solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth and do this under penalties of perjury. Good evening. I am concerned that approval of this dismal application will set a precedent allowing rezoning of major parcels south and east of the subject property with a resultant further degradation of our community's last inviting non-commercial and semi-rural entry. I ask you to deny the rezoning. On a larger scale with regard to citizen participation, uh, which has had impact on this project and relevant to future applications. For over 20 years, I have contracted as a neutral facilitator with the city of Albuquerque's land use facilitation program. Since 1994, this innovative program has provided Albuquerque citizens with a robust voice that is sadly lacking in Santa Fe. As with the ENN process, which was inspired by the Albuquerque program, this encourages communication between developers and residents who are potentially impacted by proposed projects. The meetings are, however, facilitated by a neutral professional, not the developer's hired hand as occurs in the ENN, and at no additional cost to residents or developers. Developers and residents continually express satisfaction with this process in Albuquerque. The facilitator generates a detailed neutral compilation of the fact presented at the meeting, which is then distributed to the appropriate decision-making bodies, participants, and other interested parties. If the Santa Fe process were as inclusive and balanced as the Albuquerque process, our citizens would have a stronger voice and thereby greater involvement and perhaps satisfaction in the ultimate decision. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Stephen Farber. I live at 2351 Botoff Road. I solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth nothing but the truth and do this under penalty of perjury. Um, I will provide to the recorder um, comments that I made in the public comment portion with legal objections to the manner in which this proceeding is being held. I am a former city councilor. I served on the city council from 1992 to 1996. And I remember well the controversy regarding the old Pecos Trail widening project. In fact, I campaigned and promised that I would fight the old Pecos Trail widening. And one of the things that was, even though we lost that vote on a divided vote, we was the cardinal understanding that that gateway into Santa Fe would not be disturbed. So it was widened, but it was supposed to be kept beautiful for the benefit of the citizens of Santa Fe. And that's what we're here talking about. Now, the developers and their representatives did not mention one time the old Pecos Trail scenic Carter, but that's what we're here to preserve and protect. And I keep my promises, and I promised to the community that I would fight to preserve that gateway. I am keeping my promise after all these years, and I honor my oath as a city councilor, which was to speak the truth. And what you have here is the fact that only a resolution, which is just a statement of the will of the council, not an ordinance, there's nothing that dictates that it's three to seven units. It's zoned R1. There's been no public participation process. As I see, I have 25 seconds. Other people have had to rush through their comments. That is an unfair process. And I've stated that in the document here. And I know what it's like to read a thousand pages. I used to have binders. I don't see any of you having binders. I understand it's all online and I understand how difficult that is. But remember, please, this body has not implemented the old Pecos Trail Scenic Carter. Implementing policy 3I9 is articulated in the 1999 general plan. 
because of an impasse, it's because of the city um, staff. The staff does not even use the term implementing policy in the general plan in its memo to you. We should allow Bruce Throne, who has spent hundreds of hours after he retired from the practice of law and knows the insides and outsides of all the technicalities to be able to speak because it's impossible for people just using two minutes to try and make some kind of sense. And we would also request that um, if you give the opportunity to the applicant to rebut what those who are opposed to this process um, say, then under the case of Albuquerque Commons versus the you. City Council, we ask for the opportunity Thank you. to rebut. Thank you. I would like to cross examine. Thank you. Summer. Excuse me, sir. And see, I'm, I'm being cut off. In yes, a you are. Process. Well, your time is up, sir. And that is why this is an unfair Thank you. process. I appreciate it. We need to protect your, your, the your, old Pecos. I'm sorry. Policy. Your time is up, sir. Thank you. And Mayor. Thank you. I um, am disappointed. Well, and thank you, you for coming this hearing in this way. Thank you. One final. No, you really are out of order, sir. Well, may I say please, there is no public. Report. Would you please sit down? We have. A I'm sorry. You're out of order. You are out of order. Please sit. I down. don't think I'm out of order. Well, I am the chair and I'm declaring you out of order. I would You're like. Gonna... May I hand this? Mr. Please sit down, Mr. May Farber. I hand this as a. No, please sit down. May this be a part of the record. I don't know that it is in the public. Conference. I'm sorry, you are out of order. May Please sit be a down. Part of the public. According to record. the city clerk, it is in the record. Please sit down. Have you read it? Would you please sit down, sir? Have you read it? Would you please sit down? I submit. You are out of order. Mayor, sit down. I respect this. Oh, sit down. Mayor. Now. Now you are showing your true colors. I'm sorry, sir. You are out of order. You are not demonstrating respect for this proceeding. Who's the next speaker, please? Jens Dykeman, to answer your question. I, Jens Dykeman, residing at 2126 Calle Tecolote, solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth, and do this under the penalties of prison. Good evening, Mayor and members of the Council. Um, as I, I already told you who I am, I agree with other comments made in opposition to this zone change. And given the time constraints on us, I will only add uh, one of my many concerns. The requested rezoning to R3 would be less advantageous to the community at large as articulated in the city's 1999 general plan and other city plans and is the existing R1 zoning. Increased density at that property would amount to an ad hoc rezoning prior to the required implementation of the Old Pecos Trail Scenic Corridor Future Land Use Implementing Policy as stated in the general plan and subsequently reiterated in City Resolution 2015-92. Such piecemeal rezoning along the corridor would in and of itself be contrary to the rezoning criteria in the 1999 general plan, but one, but would then perversely create by those very criteria a precedent for other properties along the corridor to upzone to higher densities. Such a scenario would be would have a detrimental effect and cascading effect on this iconic entry to the Santa Fe community. The owner of this property already has a right to subdivide and infill with nine primary dwelling units under the existing R1 zoning without creating these adverse community impacts and would be consistent with the general infill and affordable housing provisions articulated in the general plan. I ask you to deny this application. Thank you. Hi, John, Howard B. Miss, residing at 2119 Conejo Drive, Santa Fe. Solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth and do this under penalties of perjury. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor and Council. Um, 
I don't want to sound overly dramatic, and a friend of mine said it, so I can't take credit for it, but uh, developers would pay the canals of Venice to get to a cup of coffee. And after the debacle we had with Morningstar a couple of years ago, I don't think land use is up to the task of preserving or protecting anything. They bend over backwards for developers and development. That's their job, I think, and they do it. Um, so it's up to the council to decide whether there's anything in Santa Fe that's worth preserving and protecting. And, you know, we've been here before. Those of us that remember a while ago, big homes started appearing on the ridges. And that council back then had the wisdom and foresight to say, we need a ridge eater ordinance and we have preserved and protected our beautiful ridges and some of the hills and, and views in Santa Fe because of that. And that's all we're asking here today is for this council to decide whether or not the old Pecos Trail is worth preserving and protecting. As others have said, it's beautiful. The properties are one, nobody's saying don't develop. They're just saying develop it as it is, which is consistent with everything in that neighborhood. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I, Robin Ross Duggan, residing at 804 Camino Zozobra, solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth and do this under the penalties of perjury. <clears throat> Good evening. In October 20 of 2019, a mother deer with two babies came onto my property. I live up East Zia, about a quarter mile from the proposed development site. The next afternoon, I noticed a large lump under some trees. It was the doe, and she was dead. The babies were hiding in the bushes. The game warden came and checked for foul play and determined she had been hit by a car, most likely on Zia. In January of 2020, I was driving home at dusk on Old Pecos Trail. A large doe ran in front of my car, my car, and I clipped her. I waited on the side of the road for the game warden to come while she was still alive, and I had sheared off her front leg. It was the traffic hour. The overarching character of Old Pecos Trail is semi-rural, and a sense of open wildness is still there. The 25-unit proposed development at Old Pecos Trail and Zia is not a good use of infill planning. To be blunt, it is too dense. The Capitol Flats at Penn and Cordova are good examples of infill. Property could be developed at its current designation of R1, an infill much better suited to the environment at large. Last, the target area has a city resolution irreversibly attached to it, passed by the governing body in 2015, the old Pecos Trail Scenic Corridor Resolution, to protect it from short-sighted development to create standards reaching forward into the future. This resolution predated the developer's sub subdivision request. This resolution demands public participation, which has not happened yet. I respectfully ask the governing body and the mayor to revive the 2015 resolution and public participation to delay or deny the developer's request as it is proposed, stating that it is more advantageous <clears throat> stating that it is more advantageous to the community at large and an example of good land use, namely infill, it is not. Actually, what is the hurry? Take your time, please. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi, Sandra Ward residing at 117 West Zia Road, solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth and do this under the penalties of perjury. Hello everyone, try to speak in here. Hello everyone. I just bought my first house in the Soli Lomas neighborhood a couple weeks ago. It's pretty exciting. I like the wilderness of the area while still being inside the city limit. I know a lot of other Santa Feans value the beauty of the area too. 
So I felt it was important to come here today and say no to the rezoning along the old Pecos Trail corridor. I don't wanna see this wilderness area changed by overbuilding in an area that would be mismatched by denser homes. I'm asking R1 zoning stay in place to protect the character that makes this natural area so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for your persistence and patience, Ms. Brookers. My name is Robinson Kurth. I'm residing at 132 Arroyo Hondo Trail. I solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I have in reference to this 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth and do this under the perjury or penal under the penalties of perjury. Like that. So, yeah, you've heard a lot. You've done a great job of, you know, being developers and our things and having specific things met, all the criteria and the owners and landers and sellers. Yeah, we all are attached to the land. It's not that we're not about developing. It's this corridor. It's this type of development. And it's how it's being done at this time especially if you haven't been acting on prior commitments of having public input. Do that first. Allow more public involvement. Get collaboration from all sorts of people before you just do this piecemeal stuff and you see how it's like, yeah, everyone not in my backyard. So it's not that we don't accept growth. We all know that's going to happen. But in this case, we want well-designed and thoughtful growth. I think that's what we all want. So we want to protect the important aesthetic values that we have for Santa Fe for the long term. Okay, This is probably not the best development for this important scenic corridor area. This is not the best way or method to meet our housing needs. Okay. Let's seek alternative ideas and designs in the very least. It's not like my, not my backyard. We all accept change and growth. But in this specific corridor area, we want specific, well-designed plans. So if you don't live in this corridor, if you don't use it, then this inappropriate rezoning is probably going to be out of sight and probably out of your interest you know, in the next month or two. But if you're like me and like many others who drive this corridor, not like a developer from Albuquerque. Finish your thought. Yeah, sure. For those who will drive this corridor daily and who will see and appreciate this, we expect well-designed developments. So please protect that city different. Please protect this corridor. Okay, and I had a lot of other points that I was going to put, but no, I just didn't have so, uh, but seriously, come on, think about the long term. Thank, Thank you. you very much. My name is Jim Heath. Uh, I live in Galisteo, uh, just off Highway 41 in the village. I lived in Santa Fe for 20 years. We need, you to, we need you to raise your hand. Oh, that's you. right. I, Jim Heath, residing at Highway 41 in Galisteo, solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony I have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth and do this under the penalties of perjury. I have been on town councils and county commissions in the past. Unfortunately, they were all in California many years ago. And I understand the process and I respect the process. And I think this has been a good process. Now, we heard from the developer and we've heard from the community in the overwhelming, overwhelming testimony 
from this community is do not do this. As a matter of fact, I'd even take it one level further. I asked the governing body to consider designating this entire piece of property as open space, period, and leave it alone and figure out a way to satisfy the people that own the property in some way, but keep it in the way that cities like New York and Boston and San Francisco and other cities have come up with big common spaces for everybody to enjoy. This is a common space. It should stay that way. I've got 34, 32, 31 seconds left, and I'm going to yield. That's it. Thank Do you. not approve it. Thank you, sir. Mr. Mayor, council members, good evening. Kathleen Boswell, residing at 157 East Virginia Road, Santa Fe, found to declare, declare and affirm that testimony I have in reference to 2200 Oak Seacrest Trail rezoning for be the truth, nothing but the truth, and do this under the council of future. Um, I asked the question, why the city council will accept the recommendations of the land use staffers um, during the planning commission's public hearing for this particular property, uh, staffer Daniel <laughs> Escabel the response to a community suggestion that a planned unit development zoning that encourages innovative subdivision design might suit the character and integrity of the neighborhood better than, it, than the developer's non-conforming plan. Mr. Escobar's response, the department interprets its job as helping developers obtain whatever rezoning developers request, rather than suggesting the developer consider more thoughtful and conforming alternatives. Urban planning exists to encourage ways to create great communities for all, not grace, grease the skids for developers' requests that do not enhance the community and the neighborhoods. The primary goal of planning is to maximize the health, safety, and economic well being of residents with help from developers who respect the integrity and values of the community and whose requests reflect the unique needs, desires, and culture of those who live and work there. Our community deserves a proactive voice defending its values and needs, not passive compliance and, con and conceding to developers' self-serving requests. Um, this developer, under the existing zoning of R1 is can develop the property. Um, I, I ask you to reject this, this request. Thank you. Are there others in the room who have not come up to the microphone to speak yet, but who have been waiting their turn? If not, we'll turn to the Zoom attendees and see who there wants to speak and you can swear them in and recognize them in the order in which they uh they show up on the screen All right, Mayor, we're moving to uh, Zoom for online comment. I would just ask that anybody that's watching on Zoom or participating via Zoom, please raise your hand. I'll be noting in what order hands go up, and then that is how you will speak. You'll be allotted two minutes. Um, 
I'm going to ask you to state your name and uh, where you reside, so your address, and then I'll go ahead and read the statement, and you can affirm um, that you agree with it. So just to make sure that's clear for everyone, um, we'll go ahead and begin. Uh, the first person with their hand raised is Ron Trujillo. Um, Ron, it looks like I'm going to need to promote you to a panelist because of your Zoom. There you go. All right. Um, go ahead and ask you to unmute. Ron, do you see that request to ask to unmute? To unmute. I'm unmuted. Okay, perfect. I also am going to need you to mute if you're watching on YouTube. Yes. Else. Okay, cool. Will you stop that? Um, because it's going to create an echo or a feedback loop. Oh no. <laughs> um, I need you to unmute yourself on Zoom, but then mute the YouTube. I think I did it now. Perfect. Yes, you did. All right. Um, so if you'll say I and state your name and then uh, residing at with your address. I, Ronald Stevan Trujillo, residing at 3117 Sorino Rondo South, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Okay, do you solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony you have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth and do this under the penalties of perjury? I do. Perfect, thank you. Go ahead, uh, your two minutes will start when you begin speaking. Mayor Councilors, July of 2015, the Elks Lodge wanted to rezone a parcel of, of their property to allow for the Morning Star to be built and to for the Morning Star for Morning Star to build an assisted uh, living near the interstate of, of the intersection of Old Pecos Trail and Calle Sebastian. The vote was four to four when Mayor Gonzalez broke the tie to allow for this assisted facility to be built. A few days later, and at the end, at the, the next City Council meeting, the mayor changed his mind on this issue and decided to bring it back to the council for a revote after a very influential political friend and ally told him to. My concern is that once again, Old Pecos Trail is designated for a project, which I hope is approved as this part of Santa Fe should have to allow new subdivisions, not always District 3 and 4 as it always seems to be here in Santa Fe. My concern is that should this be approved, and that those same political friends and allies reach out to the mayor or other councilors once a decision decision is made as they may not um, favor any new construction on Old Pecos Trail. This will only tarnish the council again as well, all due to political friends and allies voicing their disapproval to then Mayor Gonzalez. That decision led to another city council meeting which became a circus and a dog and pony show. And eventually, the council re reversing their decision to allow the Elks to sell that piece of property to Morningstar. Please abide by your vote, be it for or against. And if it is approved, please do not let influential political friends or allies influence you to change your mind. Old Pecos Trail should be allowed to have new subdivisions, just like other districts have done for many years. No district should be treated differently than other districts, but it always seems District 1 and 2 are always the districts that are taken care of here in Santa Fe, while District 3 and 4 are always the districts that take the brunt of housing developments without any disapproval from those residents from District 1 and 2. Nimbyism needs to stop here in Santa Fe, as well as the free and love. Build affordable homes and ensure that families who really need them get them. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you. Who's next? Oops, sorry about that. Uh, Stephanie Beninato. Uh, Stephanie Beninato, I reside in District 2. Okay, do you solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony you have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth and do this under the penalties of perjury? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Stephanie, you might want to speak up a little also. Your volume is okay. low. Okay, let me see if I can turn this up. Well, maybe turn this up. Does that sound better? Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Okay. 
So um, I want to point out that uh, 23 years ago, nobody, no residents of Soli Loma, some who have lived there all this time, have pushed for a designated uh, Pecos Trail standards or corridor standards, nor seven years ago when Morningstar was there, uh, was going to be built and that got resolved. Um, there still wasn't the effort. If the planning group fell down, where were these 1,200 people? Why weren't they coming to city council every meeting and demanding that the protections be put in place? Um, and uh, the other thing that I want to point out is Soli Lomas and um, the other development are R2 and R1 through 3. This is an R.26 development. And people who uh, can we, uh, uh, are eligible for affordable housing shouldn't always have to live in multiple in, in apartments rentals. Um, and I want to offer some solutions that might work. One, I think that the building should not be higher than 15 feet, either at the, the parapet or the highest part of the roof. They need to be sited so that they are virtually invisible from Old Pecos Trail. You might say so many feet that you could see there would be no rooftop decks, no rooftop appurtenances. Um, I think some of these um, conditions that would be part of the rezoning, permanent conditions that could never be waived by exceptions, could help meet some of the objections. I think what you should be looking at is the U-turn that is necessary when you come out and you want to go uh, north. Uh, yeah, north on Old Pecos Trail. You have to go south and then make the u-turn that is i think should be your primary concern in terms of uh the potential for problems with this rezoning thank you thank you uh, ann lacy ann lacy perfect um i'm going to ask you to say i state your name and your address Hi, Ann Lacey, 81 Old Agua Fria Road West, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Do you solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony you have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth and do this under the penalties of perjury? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, Mayor and city councilors, some of us have been coming to these meetings since 1998 along with hundreds of residents to preserve Old Pecos Trail. I have tried to remember actually how many mayors and how many city councilors have sat where you're sitting, listening to how many of us in the Santa Fe community who have shown up for 24 years to preserve this trail. And I've come to the conclusion that all of us are an example of Paso por aquí. We are all passing through, and what do we want to leave of significance in our wake? The value of the Old Pecos Trail Scenic Corridor, like the plaza, is that it's our commons, not to be messed with by an out-of-town developer and three out-of-state non-resident owners who also are passing through, much more quickly, perhaps, than the rest of us. The Old Pecos Trail as a scenic corridor is something that must be carefully, sensitively, even selectively considered as something of significance because its existence and definition is written into our code. It turns out all these years that R1 along Old Pecos Trail is a placeholder. It holds in place for all of us what is the last uncommercialized historic and naturally beautiful entrance into our very unique city, an international cultural treasure, by the way. Tonight, I think you've heard more facts from the community than the applicant has been able to present. But one fact is that the New Mexico State Legislature, Santa Fe County, and the city of Santa Fe, along with hundreds of residents, raised $650,000 to preserve a few acres at Old Pecos Trail and I-25 as a gateway to Santa Fe with the intent that that was the start of preserving the entire corridor. I hope tonight on your watch, you will keep R1 as a placeholder 
and move to preserve it for the next generations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Raina Romero. Raina, can you hear me? Uh, Raina, I see you unmuted. You might want to check the volume on your device uh, to verify that it's up. Uh, Raina? Can you hear anything? No. I know that she she accepted my request to talk and unmute, but I don't have volume for her. Let's try a, a different individual and maybe come back to Raina and fix the technology glitch. Mayor, there's no other individuals in the uh, on Zoom that have their hand up. I don't know if there's anyone else interested in speaking. If you could please raise your virtual hand right now, this is the time to speak. All right, um, Charlene Cerny. Can, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Um, Charlene, I need you to say I state your name and your address so that I can swear you in. Charlene Cerny, 2275 Calle Cacique. Okay. Um, do you solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony you have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning uh, shall be the truth and nothing but the truth and do this under the penalties of perjury? I do. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, you can speak. Your two minutes will start. Thank you. Uh, I'm not going to reiterate uh, so many good points that were made by neighbors from all over the city, but I do want to just ask if it could become part of the record how many of us are on Zoom. I have no idea if it's, you know, dozens or whatever. And I, I do ask uh, the governing body to please um, reject this rezoning request. Thank you. Is that it? Yes. Okie doke. I think uh, the city clerk was saying that it is going to be a matter of record as to how many people are attending via Zoom, so that will be able to be done. Uh, Mayor, to note that we do have approximately 30 attendees. Some are staff, some are other individuals just interested, but um, the record of attendees is 30, and then we currently have um, myself and uh, another staff member as panelist. So um, we'll have that noted. Thank you. Sure. Other hands up in the Zoom area? Uh, yes, more hands have started to uh, come up. Give me one second there. All right. Um, I'm going to uh, move to Elizabeth. Elizabeth Lee. Yes, I'm here. Okay, perfect. Um, Elizabeth, can you state your name and then your address so I can swear you in? Yes, Elizabeth Lee. I reside at 2354 Santa Barbara Drive. Perfect. Do you solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony you have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth and do this under the penalties of perjury? Yes. Okay, go ahead and start. Um, I just want to be on record as opposing this rezoning application. I'm not going to go over everything that has been presented to you this evening. I did provide written comment through the portal. I ask that that be considered as part of the record. Um, many people across the city have spoken eloquently about the need to oppose this rezoning proposal. I urge you to protect the old... I can't even speak at this hour. <laughs> Protect the scenic corridor, vote no on the rezoning, and um, I'll cede to the next person in line. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, Kathy, it doesn't look like there's a last name, but um, you should have just received a request to unmute from me. Hi. Hi. Um, if you can state your full name and your street address, then I can swear you in for testimony. Uh, Catherine Sheps, 7 Calle de Valle, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Do you solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony you have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth and do this under the penalties of perjury? I do. Perfect. You can, you can go ahead and start your two minutes. Thank you. Hello. Those of you, those of us who value preserving Santa Fe's history and tradition believed Old Pecos Trail was protected. We were caught flat-footed when the property was sold to a developer with the intention of ignoring the current zoning. The owners have the right to sell their property and the buyer developer knew it was zoned R1. Why change that? A motivated developer could create a beautiful, tasteful development within the confines of the current R1 zoning. Let's go forward and work in unison the city with the community and the landowners to create something truly worthy of our historic Old Pecos Trail corridor, not another cookie cutter development. Thank you for your consideration and I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Bye. I appreciate her enthusiasm at 1030. Um, I'm going to try Raina Romero again. Raina, are you able uh, to accept the invitation to unmute? You accepted the invitation. Raina, can you check your settings on your volume, please? Um, Mayor, I'm still unable to hear her, but I acknowledge that she's unmuted her microphone. Um, oh, yeah, Raina, if you're on a desktop, the problem is I don't know what kind of device she's accessing um, the meeting from, but if you're on a desktop, the audio... Um, Yeah. yeah, if you uh, right click on your microphone, you should be able to go to audio settings. Is there a method where she can just phone us and we can listen to a phone call? Uh, yes. Let me get the phone number just for an audio call. Um, I also will just know, is there anyone else in the waiting room that would like to speak? If you would, if you would raise your hand, this is the time to do so. All right. Um, Dan, I see your hand went up. Yes. All right. Um, if you can uh, state your full name and your address, please, so that I can swear you in. Uh, I, Dan Kittrell, residing at 689 Calle Espejo, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Do you solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony you have in reference to 2200 Old Pecos Trail rezoning shall be the truth and nothing but the truth and do this under the penalties of perjury? Yes, I do. Okay. You can, uh, you can start your two minutes. Great. Uh, Mayor and council members, again, thank you so much for your time this evening. I have uh, submitted uh, statements uh, through the portal, which I would like to include as part of my testimony tonight. Uh, but I speak in opposition of the proposed rezoning from R1 to R3. Um, many of the points have already been made, uh, specifically uh, safety issues. I've written actually about the uh, proposed U-turn that the uh, applicant's engineer uh, recommended at Old Pecos Trail, which previously was or at uh, Calle Espejo, which a previous speaker noted is uh, signed as no U-turn. 
so again, uh, simple things like that, I think are important to recognize. Um, hopefully the testimony of this evening too um, reflects that uh, although uh, the attorney, Mr. Summer, uh, stated that uh, the opposition is from uh, the surrounding neighborhood. Uh, there is a lot of opposition uh, throughout the city, and uh, uh, it's not just a simple question of uh, um, opposing development. Uh, I think there's a lot of support for the current R1, uh, but I think the tripling of the density is excessive, and I would encourage you to uh, reject the applicant's uh, application. Thank you. Thank you. Did we find a telephone approach for Raina? We did. Um, Raina, if you would, if you would like to, you can call in uh, using the number one three four six two four eight seven seven nine nine, and the webinar ID is eight nine eight seven six eight nine. Four five seven seven. This is also posted on our website uh, if you need to reference the numbers. In the meantime, is there anyone else in the Zoom room who wants to raise their hand? Um, Mayor, at this time, there are no other hands. I would again like to encourage anybody that would like to speak right now, um, specific to 2200 Old Pecos Trail, please raise your virtual hand so we can acknowledge you. Right. This is the last opportunity for public comment. If you would like to speak on this case, please raise your hand. And is there any sign of Raina's phone call? Um, no, she does not to appear, has not rejoined. Raina, I see your hand up and I see her unmuted. We don't have volume for you. If you would like to jump off Zoom or just dial in directly to the webinar, we can try just a straight phone call. And I'm happy to repeat that number. It's 1-346-248-7799. And the webinar ID is 898-7689-4577. There's a phone number, but that one has already been. Mayor, unfortunately, at this point, I'm not sure. I think another option, if she wants to write to us uh, and make sure her comments get included in the record, um, or I, I don't know, could she send an email? Sure. She can email me directly. Raina, if you'd like to email uh, myself, I'll pull up my email during the meeting. It's K M M I. H E L C I C at Santa Fe NM of. Um, I'll pull up my email and look for that as well, Mayor. Okay. If there's a way to uh, send us an email with your thoughts, summarizing your points, that'd be great. We'll try to make sure that uh, the city clerk can read them. We simply can't hear anybody from when Raina tries to uh, access the Zoom, uh, the Zoom call. And Mayor, may I just interject on that point? So we would allow this for this the technical difficulty because the written comment period did end at 1 p.m. today. True. True. Um, so if it's this person for a tour, we could read it aloud as her comment. That's what I'm saying. We get it? Yeah, as her comment. Thank you. If we can get that done. it's. Is there anybody else in the room who hasn't had their chance to speak um, and would like to do so while we're waiting to see if we can access Raina's comments? If you have not spoken, your the time, please your your opportunity is now. I, I'm from the county. Uh, my name's John Collings. I live at Nine Pico Floor Path, and I do swear. Okay. <laughs> you really wanted to see that. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I've known the worst family for over 50 years. I am related to them. They are Santa Fe New Mexicans. They really have a hard time with this. Um, the property is a beautiful piece of property. Ron and Nellie died eight years ago and 15 years ago. There's been plenty of time to figure this out. The council has had it before them in the past. I think it's time to resolve this issue one way or another so that their family can continue on. If, if the community wants that piece of property, they should certainly buy it. That's all I have. Thank you, sir. How about uh, our friend Raina? Any luck? No luck. We have another person who hasn't spoken yet. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else, Madam Clerk? And there's no access to Raina. No. I think in that case, uh, I think in that case, the sworn public comment period is uh, completed. We then move to uh, the governing body having an opportunity to ask questions. And I would propose we take about a 10 minute break and stretch. It's been a very intense six hours, almost. Uh, let's stretch for a few minutes and we'll be back at a quarter to the hour. Thanks, everybody. Hey,
Please take your seats. Thank you. Could everybody please take your seats? Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm sorry we took more than 10 minutes, but uh, we all needed a stretch, I think. Uh, Councilor Mayorworth, you have the floor. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to uh, move to postpone the rest of this hearing until our first meeting in January. So the motion is to stop the stop tonight. It's about 11 o'clock. If we went through council 10 minutes apiece uh, asking questions, we'd be finished around one. If we then took up uh, more testimony, more give and take, we'd be here till 2, 2.30. I don't think... Uh, given the uh, level of interest and concern, I don't think you want this governing body voting on this at 2.30 in the morning. Uh, I do encourage if this motion passes and we move, pick it up in uh, our first meeting, if it's possible and not a huge inconvenience, everybody who is here, please come back. I'm serious about council members wanting to ask you questions and get more input from you. If it's inconvenient, I apologize. If you can't do it, you can't do it. But the uh, part of the process that the city attorney also emphasized was your input and your testimony gives us an opportunity to dig deeper into the points that you've raised. So while it is inconvenient not to keep going till all hours in the morning and then require or ask folks to come back to the best of your ability, it really will render a much better process and a much better outcome regardless of the outcome it won't be done uh, at three in the morning with exhausted residents and exhausted council members council uh rivera and then councilor garcia uh mayor would it be uh reasonable to ask that this be then the first topic of discussion as we get into the public hearing portion so that at least these people that have been here all night uh, we get done at a reasonable hour and absolutely I you know I'm after we if we, assuming this motion were to pass uh, I think we will do everything to structure it so that this item gets as much time and attention and priority as it deserves in that first meeting uh, rather you. than treat it as just another item I think the city attorney has a comment and Mayor Robert Councilors, I think you could even set a specific time if you would like to and we could do something similar to what we do with um uh public comment at 7 p.m typically and we would try to you know resume whatever it is we're doing at that time in, in order to go to that order of business that it, I think that would also be possible so I can ask for it to be right after uh Public comment, not public comment, but what is it? Petitions from the floor. Mayor Councilor, yes. And I think you could also be even more specific about the time. I don't think a seven would work because we already have a, right. another matter at seven, but. I was uh, hesitant about a time because I'm not sure how many people will be on for, for petitions from the floor. So right. safer just to say after that. Or no later than, yeah. Would that is if we simply say we'll take it up immediately after petitions from the floor at our next meeting? I think that's a pretty clear indication that it'll be shortly after 7 p.m. Yes, Councilor Garcia. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I got a question around regarding process, so maybe the city attorney can clarify this for me. Um, as you mentioned, there's some of us, or maybe all of us, that have questions for from members from the public. If we know those individuals, um, can we give their names to give them a heads up just because I'd hate for me to have the question now, me knowing that the individual's in the room right now, and then we reconvene in January and the person is not there for me to ask, answer my question. And so I guess my question is, can I say, Mr. John Doe, I've got a question for him. Mayor Weber, counselors, I'd suggest either you, um, we either provide that, uh, maybe say it right now if you know. Um, the other thing we could do is potentially, if we, uh, I don't think we have people's contact information. So you cannot reach out to members of the public to talk about this case during the pendency. So that's a disadvantage of having this long period of time, right? So it causes a challenge of, of the community to not talk to you all about this during the next few weeks and vice versa, right? It, 
in people's minds. Um, but certainly, if you know people you would want to ask questions of now, that might be a good thing to discuss right now. Well, I alert them. Let me to, make an yeah. alternative suggestion, which is counts all of us. If 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 we have folks who have testified who we specifically would like to be to the best of their ability be present, if we provide that information to the city clerk, she could reach out to those people. There's plenty of time to get to them. Yeah, we don't have their contact information. We have their addresses. Okay. And I know the individuals here. Well, I, I, I think we could definitely, like that should, all right. I don't think we should hold back and letting people know we have questions for okay, them. Okay, fair enough. So uh, why don't we take up the matter on the, 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 uh, motion on the floor and then before we adjourn we can take up as a matter of uh, process people to invite and can we do that by process because i think once the motion's passed then it's done and we can't talk further on the matter this could be if it's relevant to this motion you can talk about it now if it, it is relevant. okay councilor garcia due to postponement i'd like to notify uh pat lillis that i have a question for her community member pat lillis and community member uh councilor ives great you got a question for him great anybody yes councilor cassidy uh thanks so much mr mayor um i also will have a question for councilor ives um in january um i did want to clarify the role of public comment so we have we have reached the end of uh public comment or public testimony i'm sorry i'm sure i'm getting my terms wrong um, I just want to understand um, and want the public to understand whether or not at this time we would be accepting more written public comment from them in this interim period, because I can understand how there, if we don't state it, individuals may write to us in these three week period. Um, and so I think we should be really clear as to whether or not that is something we will be accepting or not. Mayor counselors, the deadline posted to the public today was 1 p.m. for this hearing. Yes. Now, my question is that between now and when we take this back up in January, because we are no longer taking public comment, will we be accepting written comment? I don't know if there if we already have a standard there, if that's something we have to decide now. So one o'clock today was the deadline. That deadline is going to stick. So individuals should not take the time to to write to us over the next few weeks because right, it will not be accepted. Right. Just want to make sure that you don't spend your holidays writing emails that that are not going to be accepted. So, but thank you. Thank you so much. Anyone else before we take up the vote? Councilor Rivera. All right, for Councilor Ives and also for, I don't know if she's still here, but maybe someone could reach out to her, Lucia Deitman. Somebody could let her know that uh, we had a question for her. Thank you. I have a list, but I'm a little um, gun shy about reading it out because I'm I really need some time to digest this. So um, I was struck. There are so many pieces of testimony that are really worth chatting about and pursuing further. I thought, uh, Mr. Dunn, if you can be here, it would be great. Um, if not, I understand. Um, I think also um, if uh, the uh, um, I, um, I'm trying to find my notes here. Mr. Bell would be great if you could be here. I, I, I know it may be an inconvenience, but I do have some follow-up thoughts about your comments. Um, you know, it's it's, unfor it's unfortunate we we don't have the ability to just keep powering through, but I think you'll all be happier if we don't. Um, those are a few of the of the folks who I really was struck by some of the comments, and I'd like to be able to dig some dig dig deeper. Um, Mr. Heath, if you're going to be able to be here, that'd be super. If not, I understand. Okay, well, I'll see you in January. I hope. Um, that's that's some of the folks who I'd love to be able to engage with further. Anyone else want to add some names, Cass Councilor Cassett? Um, I also just want to confirm uh, for members of the public that are here in person now that if they were here 
via Zoom, we could still ask them questions. So I wanted to make sure that everyone's aware that that is also an option. Right. Let's see, I like the... You read my... Yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. And Mayor Councillor Cassidy, I would specify, and spoke on If Zoom. you were... Yeah. But wait, so wait, if you spoke... On Zoom. What if you spoke here? Right. I'm just saying, if you're on Zoom... That, on Zoom, well, not just if you were there. Right. If, oh, right. Yes, exactly. Anything else from the governing body? Tonight? And Mayor, Mayor, Councilors, the motion on the table was just to postpone it to the next meeting. Then there was discussion of being more specific. We did not amend that motion. If you want to be, if you Council want to. Councilor Rivera, do you want to make a, an amendment to the motion, sir? Uh, if it's friendly to the maker that we uh, have this item as the first uh the first topic of discussion following. Let's get it wrong. What is it? Oh, uh, petitions from the floor. Okay. Is there a second? So hold on. Oh, point of order here. So, okay, you're going to do it that way? I think it's an amendment to your motion. Okay. So I guess second. We think we need still need a second. Second. Okay. There's a motion, there's a second. To be very specific, not only when we're postponing it to, but when the item would be taken up on that agenda. Is there any other questions about that? Can you call the roll on the amendment? <clears throat> Councilor Rivera? Yes. Councilor Merrill Worth? Councilor yes. Villarreal? Yes. Councilor Cassett? Yes. Councilor Chavez? Yes. Councilor Lee Garcia? Yes. Councilor Michael Garcia? Yes. Councilor Lindell? Yes. Mayor Weber? Yes. So we have the motion as amended, which would postpone this item to bring it up again at our meeting in Jan first meeting in January, immediately after petitions from the floor. Councilor, Councilwoman Villarreal. Thank you, Mayor. Just one other um, person to add, other than I did have questions for Peter Ives. Um, someone from the Worst family. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Oh, everyone, any other comments about the motion on the floor? Motion as amended. Motion as amended. Could you call the roll on the motion as amended, please? Absolutely. Uh, Councilor Lindell? Yes. Councilor Rivera? Yes. Councilor Merworth? Yes. Councilman Villarreal? Yes. Councilor Cassett? Yes. Councilor Chavez? Yes. Councilor Lee Garcia? Yes. Councilor Michael Garcia? Yes. Mayor Weber? Yes. Motion has been approved. All right. Thank you, everybody, for coming tonight. Uh, please come back in January and we'll pay, take it up again. After that, I think our, our agenda is completed and we stand adjourned. Thanks, everybody.